Blake Walker. We have a packed show on tap for you this evening before we get you to our big game of the week here on the Central Iowa Sports Network. We have rankings, we have highlights, we have coach interviews, and much, much more. Make sure to stay tuned. You're watching the Central Iowa Sports Network CISN Football Pregame Show Week 5 Edition brought to you by Iowa Corn. Let's jump straight into the highlights. Long breakaway touchdown, 59 yards, nice cut back there. Johnson scores. Walking Northwest takes the early 7-0 lead. Shout out to the cameraman, has to grab his camera so they don't step on it. Very nice. Later in the ball game, Will Nuss rolls out to his right, gets intercepted by Owen Clunder. Clunder, they say he stepped out of bounds, so he didn't get to go that far, but a big interception nonetheless. How about this, handoff? No. Sam Johnson keeps it, runs to the corner. Touchdown number two on the night to give Waukee Northwest a 14-0 lead. How about those strobe lights over there at Waukee Northwest Stadium? Carson Hansen, how about this field goal? It's going to bounce off the top right, upright, and doink off. Field goal no good. Take a look at the celebration from Waukee Northwest team. This is late in the second half, second quarter. A stop by the Waukee Northwest defense. Logan Stotts, big stop with five seconds left to go in the first half. Waukee Northwest is feeling it. We move to the fourth quarter, still 14-0. Johnson rolls out to his left, fires downfield, caught by Grant Carter. One of just three catches all night long completions by Sam Johnson in the passing game. Running game, though, was all that mattered. Johnson, quarterback keeper, runs it up the middle, dives and scores. Touchdown, Waukee Northwest. Waukee Northwest with more strobe lights. They went on to win 21-7. The Wolves get their first win of the season behind Sam Johnson. Nice. All right. Rolling out. Fires short. This is caught by Nick Severson. Severson almost gets to the end zone just outside of it. Easton Miller on a very next play. Going to push this one in and score. Centennial takes an early 7-0 lead early in the second quarter. Later in the second Elijah Porter, nice cutback, trucks over a man for the second straight week and scores. Centennial leads 14-0 early. Second quarter later, one minute to go in the second. Trenton Smith fires short to Nick Severson. And once again, how about the moves? Nice stiff arm to the outside. Another nice stiff arm just out inside the five-yard line down to the two. Centennial would score after that. How about Cedar Falls' Drake Gelhaus? was a workhorse how about this long run up the middle gets chased down just inside the 40 down inside the 35 Gilhaas off to a good start there, trying to get Cedar Falls back in the game couple plays later they go back to Gilhaas nice pitch nice blocking and great speed by number 29 to reach the edge and score Cedar Falls gets it within 14 21 to 7 Hey Hermanson how about this pump fake? Going deep, trying to get it within seven. Oh, almost could get there. Joe Talmadge, huge interception to stop a great drive by Cedar Falls. Big pick by the Centennial defense. Then later, it's another run. Elijah Porter bouncing off defenders, trucking his way into the end zone, and that would seal it. Centennial, big win at home. They moved to two and two on the season, 28-14 over Cedar Falls. Good win against Ankeny, 17-10. And on the very first play, the opening kickoff. How about Rashad Davis? Long kick return. Gets it inside the 20. Heck of a return by Rashad Davis. C.J. Phillip, his running back teammate, gets the handoff here. Bounces off a couple defenders and runs to the end zone. Dowling takes an early 7-0 lead. Not even two minutes into the ball game. Great start for Dowling Catholic. How about later? This is Rashad Davis. Couldn't get the touchdown on the kick return. He'll make a couple guys miss. Nice juke move. Scores it with a minute 38 to go in the first quarter. Dowling takes a 14-0 lead. Later in the second quarter, how about Smolik? Long throw. Beautiful throw to Bo Gamble right in the breadbasket. Nice throw by the Penn State commit. Jackson Smolik, Dowling takes a 21-0 lead. Late in the fourth quarter, Dowling on top, 27-0. This is the backup running back, Jack Moore. Plays linebacker, you can tell. How about this push up front by Jack Moore? Scores it. 34-0, Dowling Catholic defeats Iowa City High. The Maroons move to 3-1 on the season. Very good, very nice. 
top, top 10 rankings, courtesy of the Des Moines Register. Let's go right to those now. It is a common team that we've seen in the top five, but now a new team in the top one position, I should say. Pleasant Valley, number one in the state. A really nice option offense out there on the eastern side of Iowa. Pleasant Valley now number one in Class 5A. Dowling Catholic moves to number two in the rankings after the big win over Iowa City High. Ankeny upsets Southeast Polk. They jump to number three. Southeast Polk drops to number four after being ranked number one. Cedar Rapids Kennedy sneaks into the number five position. Always a tough team. Should be interesting to see how they can handle themselves out east. Sioux City East jumps to number six. A very good quarterback play by Richie and company has gotten the Raiders, Black Raiders, out to number six. They get a tough opponent in Ankeny Centennial this week. Iowa City West jumps to number seven. The Trojans off to a hot start this season. They get a tough game with Iowa City High for the Battle of the Boot. Irvindale in number eight spot. Cedar Rapids Prairie, another Cedar Rapids team, comes in at ninth. They get a tough spot with Southeast Polk in a couple weeks. And Ankeny Centennial at 2-2, two and two, the best 2-2 two and two team, in state, or team in the state of Iowa, jumps into number 10 with their win over Cedar Falls. They will take on Sioux City East this week for their homecoming. Those are your top 10 rankings. We will be back for coach interviews and much more. You're watching the CISN Football Pregame Show Week 5 Edition, brought to you by Iowa Corn. We all love a good win, however small or ordinary, losing track of time, finding yourself with a few extra dollars in your pocket, soaking up the perfect Iowa day. These are the everyday delights and small victories that make us smile. These are the moments that connect us all as Iowans. And these are the moments that, more often than not, start with Iowa's farm families and the corn they're growing. Because when corn grows Iowa, Iowans win. Free Godfather's Pizza begins with the download. Order through my new online ordering app and start earning free pizza and sides. It's easy. Download the Godfather's Pizza online ordering app today. Do it. Hi, this is Chris from Fireplace Superstore, and it's going to be an interesting patio furniture season this year. We have ordered a ton of merchandise, but due to supply chain issues, it's coming in a truckload at a time all summer long. If you want the best patio furniture, check early and check often. If you want to custom order your furniture, get in here as soon as you can to give your furniture the best chance to arrive this summer. Fireplace Superstore, Iowa's best patio furniture selection, just east of I-35 on Douglas Avenue. For 75 years, Holt Service Trucks have hit the streets of Central Iowa to help customers in need. It might be for plumbing, heating, cooling, a water heater, or the usual repairs and maintenance. We've done that with quality work from quality employees who bring passion and personality to the job. That's the whole difference. It gives me great pride to see how our company has grown from the seeds of success my grandfather planted in 1947. That's why more and more Central Iowans are saying, let Holt handle that. I'm off to college. Oh, rats. Hi, Joe the car guy with a reminder. Before you send your kids off to school, set up an appointment with Westside Auto. We check everything from tires to belts, fluids, hoses, wipers, and lights. 44 inspection points to help prevent that oh rats moment for your students. Call us today to set up your appointment. We'll have your kids off to school saying, For the best, head west. Westside West Auto. Auto. Not all used vehicles are created equal. DeArmond certified used vehicles have a big advantage. What sets us apart is that all used vehicles receive a 175 point inspection. Carfax report, two oil changes, collision deductible coverage, and wheel. Interviews coming up here for tonight's big game. We talked to both coaches of tonight's big game on whichever channel you're watching. We're going to send you to those interviews right now. All right. And three, two. Joining us now is uh, Marshalltown head coach Adam Goodvin and getting prepared for a matchup with Valley. But first, let's uh, take a look back here. Um, what, three and one on the season thus far. How would you assess where you're at and, and the progress you're making here? 
Well, yeah, we're, we're one and three and, uh, you know, we, we, we lost a close one, um, the last couple of weeks, you know, we, we've came out and, um, uh, played, uh, poorly in the first half to be, to be honest with you. And, and we were a completely different team in the second half. And, um, you know, right now we're, we're, we're focused on, uh, you know, make, get, making ourselves better, uh, every single day and, and hopefully putting together a, a more complete football game. Yeah, I, I think I said three one, but one and three. But um, it looks like um, a, a lot of those games are are fairly close ones. You, you've been in most of the games, haven't you? Yeah, we have. Our our kids are competing well, and um, you know we're we're right there. And you know, like I said, if we can put together uh, you know two complete halves, um, you know, we we like to think the outcomes would be different, but uh, that that is what it is, and um, you know that's kind of where we're at right now. And that's always something I know you're trying to work. Uh, through as you go through the season here and then uh, four games in how are you I know football is a tough sport how are you injury wise and health wise at this point yeah you know we got our, our typical bumps and bruises right now for this time of the year um, you know unfortunately we uh, we lost one of our our, our senior leaders and, and wide receivers um, to a to a knee injury for the season and um, you know, but, but other than him, um, you know, I think we're, we're fortunate that it is limited to a bunch of, uh, just bumps and bruises. Well, you know, trying to get better and, and do better, but then you come up against an opponent like Valley at their place and they're one of the perennial, uh, powers there. And, uh, so what are you expecting uh, as you get ready for them here? Yeah, we're, you know, we're not taking anything this week any different. You know, we're taking it day by day and, and hoping that, uh, you know, we can go home every night knowing that, that we got better today. And um, we're going to go out there on Friday night and, and compete, compete our tails off just like normal. Yeah, I talked with Coach Schwentz and he says, you know, we look at it and we sometimes look at the record and we went up there last year and he said it was a game and he said, we know it's going to be the same this way. And that's all you can ask, isn't it, is uh, that you just keep it improving and keep making it a game, huh? Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, that's what uh, that's what we look for every single Friday night is, is we want to go out there and, and, like I said, compete to our best ability. And um, what happens happens. And, you know, our focus isn't necessarily uh, on the scoreboard ever, but it's, uh, you know, winning each individual play and, and having that type of mindset. So who should I be looking for here as kind of your leaders on offense and defense as uh, you guys take the field Friday? Yeah, uh, I think offensively, it, it all starts with our quarterback, uh, junior Dalen Houston. You know, he's a, he's he's one of our just natural leaders, uh, a good talent um, and brings everybody else, you know, along with him. And, um, you know, on our offensive line, we've got uh, our left guard, Quan Ann Kwani, um, just a big kid, smart kid, loves the game uh, and physical as well. Um, and then, uh a senior running back, Ace Holmes, who's uh, who, who's emerged as a, a very solid back for us here in the past couple of weeks, and um, you know has proved to been able to uh, carry a heavy workload. And, and you know he happens to also play middle linebacker for us, so he's uh, you know an all around football player that's that's got a motor that's that's very uncommon. So um, you know he, he's a very solid player for us. And then um, you know I think uh, our our linebackers on the defensive side are, are a great. A group of kids that are smart and um, you know another returner over there is Nick Rebick um, had a very successful year last year and, and you know he's just a great kid and a great leader for us and, and uh, you know the defense kind of runs through him. All right well sounds like you guys have got some good leadership there and ready to go Friday night sounds like it might be pretty good weather too so uh, looking yeah hoping, hoping that rain holds off but uh, yeah <laughs> I know it was kind of a thing earlier in the year, oh, any kind of rain you want, but you just, you want to go through, you don't want the stuff like you have that uh, during the Iowa game where things get you know, yeah. you know, <laughs> delayed or, or stuff like, I should probably even mention that, but uh, yeah. anyway, yeah. thanks a lot for taking a little time out to preview the game and uh, we'll see you on Friday night. All right. I appreciate it. Yeah. Thank you. Joining us now is Valley head coach, Gary Swenson and, uh, We'll quickly talk about uh, last week got back on track with a win. Uh, did you see some improvement there from the team? Well, I think we're improving every week. It, it's just a matter of does it lead to, you know, a win on Friday night? It did last week. And I, I think the, the issue we're having is just it's we can't we can't seem to generate big plays. So, you know, in high school football, if you have to drive the ball for any length of time, the odds are that 
going to be a mistake or a turnover somewhere to stop that drive. And that's been happening far too often for us. And we're just, we, we generated two big plays, one for Maiden Price on about a 55 yard run and one from Michael Provenza, our quarterback on about the same distance on a run. And that was really the difference in the game. I, I thought we were clearly the better team. I thought we should have generated more points on the board, but you know, we still were able to to carve out a fairly comfortable win, and that's progress. So what do you see uh, in your opponent, Marshalltown, coming up this week? I think we're a better football team than Marshalltown. I, I just think we've played, if you compare the schedules, uh, who've we, who we have played and who they have played, uh, it's not really comparable. Now, that being said, it was that way a year ago, too, when we went up there and we struggled in the first half. It was, I think it was 14 to 6 at halftime. But we, we really never got comfortable in that game. So we know they're capable. We're not trying to minimize them when we say we've played a much tougher schedule. That's just a fact. That should be in our favor. You know, that should lend itself to us being able to get control of this game, but you, you never know, you know, we're just going to, we're just plugging away every week, trying to improve our football team. And I think that's happening. It's just, you know, it's been slow, slow progress. Especially with these high school kids, sometimes keeping them focused and, and keeping that, that can be an issue, can it? <laughs> well, I think every team is different. I I have no qualms with our work ethic and practice during the week. I, I think that uh, it's a good group that understands the game. And at some point, I think collectively, it'll it'll click in and fall into place for us. It's, it's now when you're playing really good teams like we did early, especially with, you know, Waukee Northwest, Southeast Polk, those type of football teams, when you, when that's your schedule, Urbandale, those teams can make it look like you don't have your stuff together, but, you got to credit your opponent sometimes. And I think that we're getting better. And I, I think we've got a lot of really good football teams ahead of us. You know, besides this week, we've got Ankeny in a week and we've got Dowling in three weeks. And it's it's not going to get any easier for us. So we got to figure it out in a hurry. All right. Well, we appreciate you as always taking time to before the game to talk with us. Give us a little your insight, Coach. And uh, good luck on Friday night. Thank you. Thanks for having me in their games tonight we're going to take one final break and we will be back to wrap everything up and look at the top games this week you're watching the cisn football pregame show brought to you by iowa corn i'm your host blake walker we all love a good win however small or ordinary losing track of time finding yourself with a few extra dollars in your pocket, soaking up the perfect Iowa day. These are the everyday delights and small victories that make us smile. These are the moments that connect us all as Iowans. And these are the moments that, more often than not, start with Iowa's farm families and the corn they're growing. Because when corn grows Iowa, Iowans Good evening and welcome to Valley Stadium. Time for high school football here on CISN.TV. Dar Danielson with Colin Brown here tonight. The Tigers hosting Marshalltown and we're ready for kickoff here. Valley won the toss and deferred and they'll kick off. That'll go in the end zone. So Marshalltown will take over first and 10 at the 20. And Colin, that's something we haven't seen yet this season. We got a little mist going here. A little breeze, so the weather is going to play a bigger part in this game probably than it has in any of the other four early on. Yeah, you hit it on the head, Dar. Last time I was here, we were up here. It was beautiful, 70 degrees, roughly a kickoff, and now we're getting a little more of that fall feeling, cloudy skies, some mist coming down. Should be fun. Here's Dalen Huston coming out for Marshalltown. Ace Holmes will be his running back. Two receivers, three to the right, one to the left. Here, and we'll set up the rest of the offense for you in just a second. There's a handoff right up the gut and he'll get a couple yards there. It looks like Ace Holmes on the run. 
Yeah, Dar Holmes, the senior running back. He's already pounded out 252 yards and three TDs on the season. He's definitely one of the key playmakers for this offense. Got, yeah, three TDs. And we'll see if the mist impacts the passing. 56 degrees here, misty and a little breezy as Husta brings about. One back. Hands it off again to Ace Holmes. He finds good room over that left side. He'll have the first down and a little more there. Yeah, another Pick terrific up. run from Holmes. Excuse me, Dar. That left side of the offensive line getting a terrific push up front. Looks like he get about 10 here, as you see on the replay, and just really pushing outside. Big hole over there on the left side. Brings up a first and 10 at the 32 for the Bobcats. This time the pistol running back right to the left there. Now he looks over. Throws it out quick to the slot man, and Valley is right there to close on it. Chase Hutchinson, the linebacker, diagnosed that pretty quickly. Yeah, good play by Hutchinson. He read the wide receiver screen and absolutely took off like a rocket to make that play. This Valley defense is going to have to stand tall tonight, Dar. Coming off a big win last week over Waukee, they're trying to get back above 500 doing it here at home. So second and 10. At the 32 for the Bobcats. They're in the white on the left of your screen. Valley obviously in the dark uniforms here. This time the back set up on the right hip of the quarterback. And they fake it to him. They throw it out wide looking for Corey Smith out there. And it goes incomplete. And now that brings up a third and long here and a big early play for the Bobcats. Yeah, now where Marshalltown wants to be, third and long, Dar, especially earlier in this game with the miss coming down. We'll see what interesting play call the coaching staff may come up with here. And he went all the way over to the sideline to, uh, Huston went all the way over there to get the play from the coach. Third and 10 here. Let's we'll see if Valley looks like they might bring some pressure. They do inside and... They're going to plug it up right in there and maybe pick up a yard, but it's going to bring up a punting situation here. Yeah, conservative play call for Marshalltown there, and honestly, I don't mind the play call. No, not at this here. point in the field, yeah. Right, try and flip the field here, especially with the weather conditions we're at. See it here again, hand off, and quickly in there, the center of that line, and they were ready to blitz if it was a pass, but... So Gomez back to punt for Marshalltown. There's a low punt. It's going to bounce. you got to be careful it doesn't hit somebody. Roll down at the 42. So a 25-yard punt. No returns for Valley. And they're set to go here, first and 10 at the 37 with 9-11 to play here in the first quarter. The Tigers looking for maybe this weather uh, for uh, Darius Mason. He's got some good rushing yardage, but he hasn't scored yet. And uh, maybe break him loose. Of course, got Aiden Price there. And Michael Prevenz the quarterback. He flips it off inside to the wide receiver. He cuts it up across the 40 and knocked out of bounds. On the far side there. And a good run on first down. Yeah, and I believe that was Price Dar Price, on the end yep. around. As we take a look here, great blocking out in front. And it is the Swiss Army knife for this offense. Aiden Price picking up big yardage over the left side. But you mentioned Darius Mason as well, the sophomore back. He'll eclipse 300 yards on the ground here in this game tonight, or should. He's another guy that Valley really needs to get going early. Valley with the bunch set on the right. Provenza hands it, no fakes it, throws it outside to the tight end. The tight end rumbles across Bryce Anderson. He'll pick up about four or five there. Yeah, and I like that play call from Valley. Get the big tight end involved. Bryce Anderson, a huge target at 6'6". Six, six. Good, interesting play call on first and 10. Picks up four, makes this second and manageable. 
Nope. Second and six here. Ravenza sends two receivers, three receivers left, one right. And now they look to the sideline. And now Mason drops back. Takes the handoff, fakes it. Now he'll run it right up the gut on a designed run for him. And good yardage there by Provenza. He, I mean, he's, he's had... Uh, 136 yards, but three touchdowns rushing on the season. Yeah, I was going to say, this is a dual threat, guys. We take a look at the replay. Dar faking the pitch out to his back, Mason, and getting just short of another first down. But you mentioned it, three rushing TDs, three passing TDs. He can do it through the air and on the ground with his legs. Third and short at the 39 of Marshalltown for Valley in their initial drive. Pitch back. Mason. And he's rumbling ahead, pulling uh, pulling uh, Bobcats with him. And he'll take it from the 39 all the way down to the 26, a pickup of 13. Yeah, good run the there from Darius Mason. We take another look on the pitch. Good blocking out in front. And then when you watch or turn on the film, Dar, good vision, patience, and power is what Darius Mason displays. He showcased it right there on that carry. First and 10 at the 26, Mason, 278 yards rushing. Uh, 19 yards on three catches, receiving no touchdowns on the season. Here they send trips to the right with the tight end over there. Throw it out to the tight end, wide open in the flat at the 20, 15, 10, 5, touchdown, Tigers. 26 yards. 26-yard completion to the big fella. Anderson, the tight end. He had a beautiful catch earlier in this drive, Dar. As we take another look, wide open in the flat. It's a great play call, and Anderson strolls in for six. Anderson out there. And that makes it 7 nothing here in the early going. Yeah, just what Valley needed here to get things rolling. Two and two on the season, coming off a huge win over Waukee. And they start hot here in the first quarter, putting points on the board. Dawson Stein with the PAT. It's good. Valley up 7-0 early here over Marshalltown on CISN.TV. 1,500 vehicles on WaukeeChevy.com. Shot and Kirk Chevy Waukee. If we don't have it, you can build it. Newly expanded service department means we're hiring. See the openings on WaukeeChevy.com. Shot and Kirk Chevy Waukee. WaukeeChevy.com. I'm off to college. Oh, rats. Hi, Joe the Car Guy with a reminder. Before you send your kids off to school, set up an appointment with Westside Auto. We check everything from tires to belts, fluids, hoses, wipers, and lights. 44 inspection points to help prevent that oh rats moment for your students. Call us today to set up your appointment. We'll have your kids off to school saying, For the best, head west. Westside West Auto. Free Godfather's Pizza begins with the download. Order through my new online ordering app and start earning free pizza and sides. It's easy. Download the Godfather's Pizza online ordering app today. Do it. And here's Valley on the kickoff after taking the ball down and scoring. That'll be a touchback, and Marshalltown will start over first and 10 at the 20 for their second possession, just like they did on the first one. Colin Brown, Dar Danielson here with you tonight. And... Uh, Valley's got to like that first drive, the way it uh, started out and finished for them. 63 yards on, let's see, one, two, three, four, five plays. Yeah, no doubt, Dar. They did it on the ground and through the air. An impressive mix, an impressive drive for that Valley offense. And a little under two minutes, so. Dalen Huston comes out for Marshalltown now. One back. With him, he'll roll and I'll hand back the other way to Ace, and there's a big face mask there. That'll be 15. As yeah, that was clear as day, Dar. He wrapped him up right around the face mask. We got a great look at it from the press box. They're gonna attack this on 15. Yeah. 
And I, I just one of those things where I think on the cutback he tried to get his hand up, and you know, not really intentional, but you got. Let's see this here. Because they start left, and then he cuts back the other way, and then he just reached in there. Uh, the, the big yeah, man. it looks like it was Fountain, <laughs> I believe. To yeah. Our, yeah, just Surreal got his up top. Tough break for this Valley D, but nonetheless, 15 more for this Marshalltown offense, and they can use it here in the early going. First and 10 at the 38 with the 18-yard pickup. And Houston with Ace Holmes behind him. Three receivers left hand off to Ace. He cuts it over the left side and is upended there by Andrew Price. Yeah, Ace Holmes had room to run. That's a beautiful tackle, upended him. Let's talk about that uh, line. David Santa Cruz, Quanon Cuoni, Nick Lucas, Jaden Dine and Clay Jakey getting a few holes against this Valley defense here early on. Yeah, you said it, Dar. They've got a good push up front. Holmes has had room to run in the early going. There's a snap handoff inside to Ace Holmes again. And second down to get a few, maybe three. So make it a third imaginable here. Yeah, that's where Marshalltown wants to live. Third and short, excuse me. Get this ground game rolling, and then obviously go with the pass or play action. Well, and we still got that kind of misty rain, so I don't know if that ball's slick. We'll see. All the passes so far have been short passes, but we'll see if they try something here. Houston with it. Drops back, throws it out quickly. Hits a man outside, Treshawn Brooks, and... He'll get it down to the 45 into Valley territory. Yeah, so. that's the leading receiver for this Marshalltown squad, Dar, Treshawn Brooks. Ten catches for a buck 62 on the season. Keep an eye on Aiden White. You see here, just a quick out to him. Yeah, beautiful read, beautiful Caught throw. It, and he turned it and got a few yards after the catch there. Pickup of about 10 on the play. Brings up first and 10 at the 45. Bobcats on the Valley side of the field for the first time. Houston with it. He'll take it himself. And he got a bad pick up on first down. About four yards there. Oh, give him five. So. Yeah, they will. Give him five on first and ten. Houston over to the left side. Just a quarterback keeper. Simple play call. But nonetheless, positive yardage from Marshalltown. And. Houston has run for 266 yards here on the season. So he he will pass it or he'll pull it down and run it. Second and six now at the 41. Rolls now hands it back the other way. That cut back to Ace again, and he'll pick up a couple this time. Just kind of getting all the motion going one way and bring it back the other, and it looks like we have a Bobcat down on the field, which... Yeah, I can't make out like guard the it's, number. Yeah, it's one of the big linemen, looks like, but can't tell exactly who it is. Yeah, tough break in the early going, but you mentioned it. That was. Well, we'll take a break here with a timeout on the field on CISN.TV. I love a good win, however small or ordinary. Losing track of time, finding yourself with a few extra dollars in your pocket soaking up the perfect Iowa day. These are the everyday delights and small victories that make us smile. These are the moments that connect us all as Iowans. And these are the moments that, more often than not, start with Iowa's farm families and the corn they're growing. Because when corn grows Iowa, Iowans win. Hi, this is Chris from Fireplace Superstore, and it's going to be an interesting patio furniture season this year. We have ordered a ton of merchandise, but due to supply chain issues, it's coming in a truckload at a time all summer long. If you want the best patio furniture, check early and check often. If you want to custom order your furniture, get in here as soon as you can to give your furniture the best chance to arrive this summer. Fireplace Superstore, Iowa's best patio furniture selection, just east of I-35 on Douglas Avenue. Back here at Valley, Nick Lucas, the center for Marshalltown. And 
That's a big deal because he's out on the ball all the time. You see him over on the sideline, looks like he's all right. That's good to see, but, you know, you can have exchange problems. Of course, here you're in the shotgun too, and that's a little different than taking the direct snap, but we'll see if that impacts Marshalltown at all. So they're on the move. Throw it out, and just a little up over the hands of his intended receiver there. And uh, Yeah, I believe that was Nick Rebick. Rebick, yeah. And just a little high for him. So that brings up a fourth down and three. Yeah, and it looks like the offense is staying on the field, Dar. Marshalltown obviously in Valley territory. We'll see what they go with here, obviously. Yeah, and it's probably pretty long for a field goal. I think the longest is a 40-yarder for their kicker, so they're going to go for it here. And the punt, you're kind of in between there. Houston comes out. Valley almost jumped. They jump here. You got a first down. And now they're going to take a timeout. That was a little bit of the strategy there. Tried to get him to jump, and then they took the timeout before the play clock ran down. Yeah, see if you can't draw Valley offside. Not a bad decision from this coaching staff. It'd be interesting now to see if they try and pin this Valley offense deeper. Go for it. As you've mentioned, Houston, the junior quarterback, he can do it with his legs and arm too. And the thing with Marshalltown, you don't want to say they want to score every time, but they want to, you know, they don't want to let Valley get too much distance between them because they know Valley's got some big play potential, and you want to kind of keep that in hand here. So we'll see uh, what the decision is. And then, of course, maybe if you get a good punt and you uh, cough and corner them here, that it looks like they're going to bring the offense back out. And as you said with Houston, as, as good as he is at running, and then you got Ace, and they've They've been able to punch some little holes in that defense so far, and Valley is, is trying to adjust to it. So let's see here. Big play early on in this call game, fourth and three at the 38 for Marshalltown. High snap. Houston will take it himself. Cuts it up left side. He's got the first down and more. Yeah, great play call, Dar, from that Marshalltown staff. Houston had plenty of room up the gut, and again, a dual threat guy. He's passed for three TDs on the season, but rushed for five. As we take another look going over the left side, it's sealed off, and Houston picks up a huge first down. Well, they're doing some good blocking up front, those big guys for the Bobcats right now. They're uh, finding just enough holes for the speedy backs, quarterback and back, to get through here. First and 10 at the 31 here. 3.27 to play in the first quarter. Marshalltown trying to get down and score and knot it up here. There's a handoff right over the left side. Plowing ahead, still going. It looked like he was stopped and he's still going. Still moving. The whole ball, football ball's out. Valley is on it. And. That's the problem sometimes, when, Callan, when you're fighting for the extra yardage, the ball gets popped out of there. Yeah, give credit to Ace Holmes. That's just a powerful run. Getting close to inside the 10-yard line as we take another look. He was taking on body after body, picking up extra yardage. But at that point, Dar, there's too many valley arms in there. The ball pops free, and yeah. the Tigers jump on And by that, you know, you got three guys holding you up and another guy ripping at it. That By that time, you're... Better part of Allers, maybe to go down and you got the first. You know, you don't think that way. You're thinking end zone. but So the turnover, the fumble, gives the ball to Valley here. First and 10 at the 13 with 3.06 to play here in the first quarter. They hold off the first drive here. There's a run and a tackle right up the middle as uh, Provenza tried to keep it in. Bobcats read that defensively very well. Yeah, and guess who, Dar? That's the running back, Ace, Ace Holmes, Holmes, playing yeah. middle linebacker. Marshalltown has a few guys that go both yeah, ways. Yeah, just tonight. say that. A lot of they have a lot of guys going both ways here tonight, and so they get one out of that. And so here's Valley again, Provenza. And we'll tell you a little bit more about the Valley starters here. Hands off to Mason. Mason plows up in there, and he'll get it out to the 20, and that'll make it a manageable third down there. 
for Valley. Yeah, that's Mason over to the left side, Dara. Common theme this season. Valley wants to run left over that big side. Owen Westermeyer, Derek Allen, Spencer George, Jacob Moeller, and Brandon Jenkins. The big lineman up front here for Valley. They send three to the right, one to the left for Provenza with Mason. Now Mason split out wide and they got Aiden Price back there with Provenza. I got to check those numbers. Those guys flip-flop so much in and out here. Now dropping back, looking, looking, waiting, waiting, now rolling. Now Provenza's going to try to get it himself. Runs through and he's out over there. Looks like he may. It's going to be close. Right at the marker, but the uh, referee straddling the line there. I mean, he may have it, I think. Yeah, I think yeah. you're right, Dar. I think they're going to give it to him. Boy, they, they sure did mark him right <laughs> at the marker. <laughs> well, they Bobcats are right there and shoved him out, but. Yeah, interesting play see, call here. The here replay. Take a look, Dar. You mentioned it. Aiden Price in the backfield. He's a Swiss Army knife for this offense. They'll line him up wide, put him in the backfield. That time is a decoy, but it works out. They pick up a first down. Provenza now, they've got Price wide to the left, and they've got uh, Darius Mason in there back behind Provenza in the shotgun, or pistol, I guess this would be. High snap, but Provenza will take it. Follows right around behind his back, Mason, and he'll pick up some yardage. Yeah, I think they went with some wildcat there, Dar. That was Aiden Price. Nice. Looked exactly like Provenza. Oh, was he? Taking the yeah. snap. I saw the gloves and I... <laughs> yeah. Okay, they're they're switching everything in and out here. Yeah, again, he is the do-it-all man for this Valley offense. He takes it over to the left side that time for a gain of four, but I figure with the weather conditions tonight, they'll try and get the ball in his hands as early as they can. Yeah, and you don't want to maybe do a lot of switching to the ball if you don't have to. So here we go. Now Provenza back there. Trips right, under a minute now in the first quarter. Valley with it, hands off. Mason follows his blocker right around. He'll get the first down and up across the 35 to the 36. Clock will stop on the first down. Good patience by Darius Mason there. We mentioned it in the early going. When you put on the film, it's patience, vision, and power. That time he showcased all of them, putting his head down at the end, but waiting for his blockers out in front. Vision to find the hole. That's a first down for Valley. Says we'll pick up their clock running. Of course, Valley doesn't care with the lead. Doesn't matter. They're, the wind, the flags have kind of died down, so there's really no advantage there. The mist is coming straight down, so everybody's getting misty out there. And they throw it out to Price. Is that a lateral? Nope, they're going to say incomplete. Okay. <laughs> Boy, it that sure was, did look close. Yeah. Yeah, Aiden Price, the intended target, and the miss may have caused problems on that one. The ball just a little out in front, and he couldn't corral it. And you see the rain there. Or you can see it good there in the lights with a good camera shot. Now it's, it's not really a mist now, is it, from there? It's hard to tell up here. It doesn't even look like it's raining, but when you look in those lights, you can see how much it's coming down. So second and ten. Handed off to Mason. He'll come around, flipped up over the 40 to the 41. And that'll be the last play of the first quarter. Valley will come up with a third down and about five here when we come back for the second quarter after this on CISN.TV. We are. We are. We are so much more than an energy company. We are connectors, community protectors, and clean energy leaders. We are job creators, friends and neighbors, stewards of your dollars and savings. Yes, we. We. We are so much more. We are the energy behind your everyday. And we are obsessively, relentlessly at your service. For 75 years, Holt Service Trucks have hit the streets of Central Iowa to help customers in need. It might be for plumbing, heating, cooling, a water heater, or the usual repairs and maintenance. We've done that with quality work from quality employees who bring passion and personality to the job. That's the whole difference. It gives me great pride to see how our company has grown from the seeds of success my grandfather planted in 1947. That's why more and more Central Iowans are saying, let Holt handle that.
Back here at Valley Stadium, you see again the rain coming down here as we head to the second quarter. Dar Danielson, Colin Brown here in Valley will have third and five at the 41. After getting a fumble, Marshalltown drove deep, and that's going to come up just a little short. He gets up to the – did he fumble? Well, let's see. They do say it is a fumble. So a fumble by Valley. Well, our second fumble of the day, the, our first time it was Marshalltown that coughs it up, then here. Back in their own end, it's Valley as we take we another look. Diagnose here, he's into the pile. Yeah, he just got hit and lost it. And the ball slid out of there. And it's got to be wet and hard to hang on to, you know, yeah. with the way things are going. Yeah, and that may have been Ace Holmes, the running back from Marshalltown, playing both ways. I know he was in on the play, so trying to regather, group himself, playing defense here. And now we'll turn around and be in the backfield for the Bobcats here again. Neyland Houston there, Ace Holmes with him in the backfield, drops back, wings it out quickly to Corey Smith, and he's brought down, pick up of about four. Yeah, so I they're like not that afraid to throw out the rain here. No, they're not. I like that play call, Don. First down, obviously the rain's coming down. Valley defense probably thinking run. They sling it out wide to the left, a good pickup. And make trying it second to, and six. Trying to spread that defense out a little bit, putting a couple receivers on each side, then you got Holmes there, so, and then you know you got a running quarterback, so you can't just leave him either. So a Bobcats offense kind of putting a little pressure here on the D. They send Rebick and Rebick and uh, Smith out wide to the right, two receivers left. Houston back, looking pressure on him now. He's going to roll, and he's going to cut it up, and he'll get dropped right at the line of scrimmage, and so. All that running and yeah, good no tackle gain there on it. From Valley, Houston escaped the pocket, flushed to the right, picked up maybe one. It looks like they'll give him one on the give play, Dar, bring up a third and five for the Bobcats. So third and five at the 41. Houston brings him out. They got wings on each side, slots two receivers wide. Man in motion, they fake it to him, dropping straight back. Throws it over the top, a little screen there. And he's got the first down, Tate Ring. And yeah, good play yellow. call. Good play call, Dar. I like that call. Set up the screen to the right side, flag down, and it looks like well, that, it's going against Valley. It's Valley, so. So here you see, rolls out, then just that little screen ring gets a couple good blockers out there. He had Santa Cruz and Dine. So the penalty. Yeah, we'll see if this Valley defense can stand tall here in the red zone, Dar. You look at Tristan Irvin, he's the do-it-all linebacker. Ranges so well side to side, and he leads this team in sacks with two on the season. Now what did they call the penalty? Was that a, a holding, or was uh, that a... Yeah, if I'm not mistaken, I believe it was defensive holding, Dar. Okay, so. I sure couldn't tell from the referee on the field. First 10 at the 20 now for Marshalltown. Houston. Hands it off to Ace. He cuts it up on the right side, and he's bowling down for about a four-yard pickup. Yeah, good pickup from Ace right there, the running back, the do-it-all running back. Boy, he Holmes. runs hard, doesn't he? He gets down in there. Of course, he had the fumble when he tried a little too much down here, but, man, he puts the shoulder down and dives in there. Yeah, the common theme, Dar, you see it there on that play and on the fumble. It's multiple defenders to bring him down when he has the ball in his hands. That'll bring up a second and six, a pickup of four. Second and six at the 16 here for Marshalltown. They're trying to tie it up here. Valley scored on a 63-yard drive on their first possession. Now cuts inside looking. Now going to pass, and he's sacked in the backfield. Big number 95, Ryan Kennan got through there. Houston had to hold it, didn't have anybody open. 
Yeah, there's nowhere to go with the football, Dar. Houston tried to roll out to his left, escape the pocket, but it's Kennan as we take a look here. And he was huge two weeks ago in the second half against Urbandale. You can see he's continued to stay hot for this defense, wrestling him down in the backfield for a huge sack. So that, you go from a second and six to a third and 16. Third and 16 now at the 26 for Marshalltown. You might be in uh, two down territory here, depending on what they get. Houston trying to go again, and he's going to be gobbled up there by a host. Kennan's in there again, as is uh, Surreal Fountain. Yeah, Houston tried to step up into the pocket, Dar, but that pocket collapsed on him so quick. That Valley front four getting to him again, and you said it. It's Fountain with a huge play to force fourth down. And see the replay again. He's got one, two, just three seconds back there. That's hardly time to find a receiver. Yeah, not much know. time at all to throw the football. So fourth and 17. I'll try a 44-yard field goal by Gomez. Hold is blocked. And Valley picks it up at the 50, 40, 30, 20, 10. Five touchdown Tigers. That is uh, Isaiah Pinks. You what got the play. pink slip there. <laughs> what a play and on court of the end zone for 19 Pinks. And man, what a play or turn of events there for Valley. Block a field goal on fourth and eight as Let's we take see. another look. Comes in there. And they got good penetration. He picks it up at the 40, so that's a 60-yard return. Yeah, rumbling, stumbling into the end zone, <laughs> a turn of events, and Valley does it with special teams here in the second quarter to go up 14-0 or pending 14-0, a huge play for this Tigers team. Wow. Wow. Well, Marshalltown, they're driving, get down in, inside, they fumble. Then here they down, try a field goal, it gets blocked, and it's turned into six the other way. And now here's Valley coming out. And kick is up and good by uh, Alvaringa. And that makes it 14 nothing here on CISN.tv. 75 years, Holt Service Trucks have hit the streets of Central Iowa to help customers in need. It might be for plumbing, heating, cooling, a water heater, or the usual repairs and maintenance. We've done that with quality work from quality employees who bring passion and personality to the job. That's the whole difference. It gives me great pride to see how our company has grown from the seeds of success my grandfather planted in 1947. That's why more and more Central Iowans are saying, let Holt handle that. Not all used vehicles are created equal. DRM and certified used vehicles have a big advantage. What sets us apart is that all used vehicles receive a 175 point inspection. Carfax report, two oil changes, collision deductible coverage, and wheel dent and windshield repair. Also, all DRM and certified come with two warranties. A one year, 12,000 mile bumper to bumper, and a two year, 100,000 mile powertrain. DRM and Ford Indianola, DRM and Automotive Knoxville, DRM and Auto.com. Back here for the kickoff for Valley. Going to be taken, fumble, and still loose. Who's got it? There's a scramble, and now a scrum. Boy, I think, Dar, I think Valley came up with that football. They may have. Rebic looked like he booted it once or twice out there yeah. in the rain as they're digging to the bottom of the pile here. And, oh, uh, Marshalltown dodges one there. The only thing is now they're in real bad field position. Yeah, backed up inside their own 10. That's a break for Rebic in this Marshalltown offense. Let's see we it take here. take another look. He couldn't quite get a hold of it. And then it was anybody's fault <laughs> Man. at that point. But How Marshalltown got back on that football with the black jersey swarming, I don't know. 
But they'll get a crack out of here. Marked, it looks like they mark it, Dara, what, the seven-yard seven yard yard line? Seven-yard line, yeah. Because he was at the 10, and if he fields it cleanly, he had a little room to maybe get, you know, out beyond the 20. But, and again, the rain's still coming down here tonight. And that's been a factor already. We've had two fumbles lost, one for each team. Hand off, right up the gut, has a wide open hole, burst through the hole, ace, Holmes. And he gets first down. That's a big play to get him out of a little trouble there. Man, great play call and great run there by Holmes. I'll tell you what, Dar, we take another look. This running back, quarterback duo in the backfield for Marshalltown, they've had great success here in the first half, going power right through the middle of that offensive line. We'll see if the staff keeps an eye on that and keeps plugging away to run the football. I know the Valley coaches are going to say, get in there and wrap up that tackle. This guy, you can't put your arms out because he'll run right through it. First and 10 now at the 19. After the 12-yard pickup, handoff again. Over the right side, has some room there. Finally, a wave of black comes in and slows him down. Pickup of about four there. Yeah, Dar, it's good to see as well the center, 51, Nick Lucas. He is back in the ball game from Marshalltown. Yeah. Injured there midway through the first. It's good to see him back on the turf. Back out there and going. The one thing with... Marshalltown, not as much depth probably as Valley. Well, Houston brings them out again. They've gained some ground, but they've been hurt first by a fumble, and then they tried the field goal. It was blocked to return. There's a snap inside, a little trickeration there, and Ace will get a few out of that. Yeah, direct snap to Ace Holmes, it looked like. And he'll pick up four, third and two upcoming for the Bobcats offense. I, got, I don't know what you gain out of that, although it just goes straight to him. You know? Let's see here. Cause, yeah, see the right by the quarterback. Yeah, direct snap, straight pass through, no handoff needed. That's okay as long as the four. two don't bump into each other back there and you cause yeah, a fumble. Yeah, another turnover you know? is not what Marshalltown needs. <laughs> no. Third and two at the 27. Big third down here for the Bobcats. They need to get some points on the board. Here are five minutes to play first half. There's a snap again. Right through, burst through. He almost broke it through the defense into the second level, but gets all the way out to the 40-yard line to pick up a 13. Boy, both these Dars back play with power and physical strength running the football. Another direct snap that time to Holmes, and he takes it right up the gut for a huge first down. And there he gets it. He runs, look, he runs kind of low. Good center of balance and hard to pull down. Finally pulled down there by Valley. Yeah, I thought we'd see more Dalen Houston on the ground using his legs as well, but with the way Holmes is running, why not? First and 10 at the 39 for the Bobcats here. Trying to at least get on the board before the half ends, and that's another good play over there. And yeah, Dar, yeah, this is going to be pick up a five. Yeah, excuse me. This Marshalltown mm -hmm. offense has moved the ball up and down the field. They've been in the red zone and Ace Holmes fumble, then inside the thirty before the field goal was blocked. So yeah. they're capable. Right before that fumble, looked like they might be a, you know answer going to answer that Valley score, but then they turned it over, and that time Ace he was just kind of pushing, trying to get extra yardage, and they. They were able to strip him. Here they go, kind of a little tighter formation with the two slots in there. Send one in motion, and then they hand it off to Ace again, and he'll roll ahead, and there's a late flag coming in. And that's sometimes toward the line where you get a holding call. Let's see what they call here. And... Yeah, you're right, Dara. It was a late flag. I think they are going to tag Marshalltown with a hold, but here we go. The official's discussing. Oh, face mask on Valley. Okay. The reason I thought that because it was the runner was clear out here and it, the flag was thrown back at the feet of the lineman. But yeah, it sure was. Man, and that's the second one on Valley yes. here this evening, Dar. And the third penalty overall. And Marshalltown hasn't had a penalty yet, but that's a big one there. Yeah, with 3.30 on the clock, an extra 15 tacked on. That is huge for this Marshalltown offense. Moves them down to the 38-yard line, and they're just been plugging away. 
We have uh, two timeouts left. Uh, still plenty of time, really, with 3.16 to go here. Houston with it. And there's the snap. Handoff. Right side. Ace Holmes. He plows into the pile. He's going to get another four yards out of that. Yeah, that's I'm Ace no Holmes. mathematician, but... Four yards every time is going to get you a first down. It sure right? is, Dara, methodically <laughs> moving the ball down the field. That's what Marshalltown's doing right now. They're going to the bread and butter, and that's Ace Holmes in the backfield. Boy, I tell you what, this kid plays with power and strength. His lower half, he is churning for extra yardage, giving yeah. it his all. And that Valley defense huffing a little bit. They've been out there on the field quite a bit now. Because they were out there, and that's the thing with the black field goal. The defense comes right back out. Here's Houston. Takes a little high snap, hands it off. No, keeps it this time and runs out and hits the receiver on the outside, Corey Smith. Or no, see, that was uh, 27. Yeah, I believe it's Nick Rebick, Nick his Rebick. first catch of the night. Yeah. Yeah, and he's another guy, Dar, for this offense. Do it all. He'll run it, catch it out of the backfield, and then line up out wide. He's got 32 rushes for a buck 32 on the season. So another capable option for this offense. So a little sleight of hand there as he <laughs> fakes it, rolls out. Yeah, I like that play call, a little play action, fake roll out, easy throw for Houston, at quarterback with the rain. Send Smith out to the right. He's got Rebic kind of in that slot position there on the right. And Jasek Lee there too. Rebic in motion, handoff to Ace. Yeah, nowhere to and run on that. That play, time a dollar. little less yardage, yeah. He'd been picking up about four or five at a pop. This time they stop him. Yeah, and I believe that was Fountain on the inside who got him at then, first. Oh, right. Well, he's all right. I yeah, guess he just like had to get everybody ground. off him. <laughs> I thought for a minute there, whoa, if he's injured, that's not a good sign for Marshall Yeah, dog Marshall pile at time. the end of that play. Thankfully, Holmes gets up. Here's Marshalltown. Again, they had it with about five minutes to go. They've been working it down, trying to get on the board here after Valley scored an offensive drive, blocked the field goal, returned at 60 yards. There's a handoff, and Ace winds his way inside there. Well, I'll tell you what, Don, Marshalltown really taking this clock down. This drive started with over four minutes yeah. on the clock, and now we're entering the one-minute mark. Good job moving the ball down the field, a methodical drive. For well, they're going to have to start offense. thinking, too, about their timeouts unless they, they bust one here, but be third and six at the 14. And third and six here at the 14. And in motion, fakes, throws across the middle, a little too much on it. Corey Smith was dragging across there. And that'll be fourth and six. So you go the field goal again, or you. I well, think you're down here. I might try to go for, you know, try to either get the first down or the touchdown and try to get seven out of this. I think they are. They're, yeah, and it looks like Marshalltown's going to go for it. I think it's the right call. If they yeah. would have hit that first field goal, Dar, I think you do possibly. Yeah, then you kick maybe it, kick another one. Because, yeah, then you're, then you got a 7 6 game, but. Here we go. Big play here. Fourth and six at the 14 for Marshalltown. Single back behind three receivers left. Stop. Look to the sideline. Yeah, it looks like they will burn a timeout here. And our play clocks aren't working down there. So they will discuss it here. Now you got with Houston, you got a lot of, you know, if you got a run pass option with him, maybe, you know. Yeah, I think or, you're right, Dar. Or, you know, if you're going to throw him, maybe a quick out to the sideline where you get it and get out of bounds and then, you know. Yeah, get it in but, the playmaker's hands, let him make a play for himself. Or, as you mentioned, get Houston, roll him out of the pocket. Remember, he's a dual threat guy, can use his legs to run and throw. I like that call. Roll him out in space, let him make a play for you here on fourth down. But the thing is, they got the Valley defense. They've been running it, and they've been doing a little bit of everything, so Valley's got to be ready so that any kind of play, you know, here where they give them a little motion, and Valley's just got to stay at home, keep their defensive spots, and, you know, 
Yeah, it is a big play for this Valley defense as well. They've obviously shut out this Marshalltown offense coming off a week where they only allow six to Waukee in a victory. Let's see if they can do it here again tonight. So they'll send to the left, Rebick and Smith to the left here. Got a slot there on the left in the shotgun is Houston. Fourth and six, drops back, looks, throws to the end zone. One-handed, no. Wow. Good attempt by Treshawn Brooks. It was yeah. a little tight coverage to say the least to see on the replay here. It was tight coverage, Dar. They just throw the fade to their best receiver, Treshawn Brooks. You see it here, tight coverage by Pinks. Yeah, but it but was it clean coverage. It just unable to get his body turned there and pull that in. Yeah, it was a replay. good play by the offense and the defense there. Yeah, it sure just, was. Uh, Take a look at the replay, and Pinks was in good position, had his head turned around, got his arm in there. A good play from the Valley defense, forcing yet another stop here against this Marshalltown O. See what Valley does here deep in their own territory. They'll uh, just try to run it and run the clock out. No, they're going to drop back and pass. Sending everybody deep. And caught by the tight end. Breaks free up across the 50. What a catch and what a throw. Bryce Anderson. Boy, I tell you what, Dar, that's Michael Provenza rolling out, making a play. Threw it into there coverage, it but his big tight end, Anderson, turns around, makes a play for him, and then breaks a tackle to get upfield across the 45 near the 50. What a play. And for this gets Valley out of offense. bounds. That'll, it would have stopped on the first down, but it stops it here too, so you get a chance. So up to the 49, that was a 35-yard pass. Yeah, I tell you what, Bryce Anderson already has a TD here tonight, 6'6", a huge target and weapon for this Valley offense. And there's a run up the middle, Provenza. And they've got three timeouts. I would say they'll probably want to use one of them here, which they will, as Provenza gets a good yardage. Picks yeah. up 10. Yeah, another good play call by this Valley staff. Provenza right up the gut. Picks up well over 10 for another first down. So 25 seconds. They still have two timeouts left. So you got a lot you can do here. You can run it or pass it. Yeah, plenty of time. As you mentioned, you got the timeouts and you got a kicker who has a capable leg if needed as well. Mm -hmm. I know Valley right now is trying to get into the red zone. But nonetheless, at least try a boot here to make this a three-score game. Yeah, the, the big bonus would be to get in the end zone, get another seven up. But if you at least get a field goal out of this, because there I was thinking, well, maybe they just, you know, run that 41 seconds off and go into the halftime happy. But no, they decided to come out and throw the long bomb, change it up a little bit. So Provenza comes out. Going to go empty backfield, three receivers to the right, two to the left. The big tight end there on the right side, Bryce Anderson. Provenza, a little pressure, drops back, rolls, rolls, throws to the end zone, got the tight end, caught it, did he? No, it's picked off. Touchback. Wow, what a play from this Marshalltown defense, Dar. I tell you what, it looks like it was 21. Saron. Wow. Yeah, the cornerback, Saron, comes down with it. We take another look. Perenza rolling to his right. Perenza, excuse me, throws this one up for grabs. It's off Anderson's hands, and yeah, right there in the end zone, a you know, interception. And, I, and that's not a bad play because normally, you know, that your tight end's going to maybe catch that, and you, he's either going to fall in the end zone or just a bad, you know, a good break for uh, Marshalltown on the INT in the end zone, and they get it first and ten. Yeah, with the way that connection's gone tonight between Provenza and Anderson, you like the odds. That time, Marshalltown comes down with the football. Well, let's see if they just run it out or if they try to run a play here. Let's see, they might. You're just going to hand it off. And that will should run it down for the first half. But, wow. <laughs> A lot of action here in this first half. And Valley up 
14 to nothing here at the half, but Marshalltown has had some opportunities, but some turnovers hurt them. And we'll take a break. We'll come back uh, with the halftime after this on CISN.TV. When you need to conquer the drifts on your property, get the job done your way. The Western Defender Compact Snowplow. All the professional grade features in just the right size for your mid-sized pickup or SUV. Easy to attach and easy to use. Get the performance to plow like this and finish like this. Western. More jobs done faster. Visit Truck Equipment Inc. today at truckequipmentinc.com. Not all used vehicles are created equal. DRM and certified used vehicles have a big advantage. What sets us apart is that all used vehicles receive a 175 point inspection. Carfax report, two oil changes, collision deductible coverage, and wheel dent and windshield repair. Also, all DRM and certified come with two warranties. A one year, 12,000 mile bumper to bumper, and a two year, 100,000 mile powertrain. DRM and Ford Indianola, DRM and Automotive Knoxville, DRMandAuto.com. For 75 years, Holt Service Trucks have hit the streets of central Iowa to help customers in need. It might be for plumbing, heating, cooling, a water heater, or the usual repairs and maintenance. We've done that with quality work from quality employees who bring passion and personality to the job. That's the whole difference. It gives me great pride to see how our company has grown from the seeds of success my grandfather planted in 1947. That's why more and more Central Iowans are saying, let Holt handle that. Mornings, they can be hectic. Let's go. So can your car, so to get a free pickup, drop off or delivery. Head over to Honest Wrenches and their loaner vehicles. No extra charge. Find your peace of mind with even more wonderful services. Every vehicle that comes in gets a full visual inspection and a five year, 50,000 mile warranty. No extra charge. Head on over to Honest Wrenches. No extra charge and it's how service should be. We all love a good win. However small or ordinary, losing track of time, finding yourself with a few extra dollars in your pocket soaking up the perfect Iowa day. These are the everyday delights and small victories that make us smile. These are the moments that connect us all as Iowans. And these are the moments that, more often than not, start with Iowa's farm families and the corn they're growing. Because when corn grows Iowa, Iowans win. Back here at Valley High School, the band coming out in the rain to perform here, and the Tigers up 14 to nothing over Marshalltown. And you look at that, and it's, it seems like Valley's got a really good, but it's a little closer than what it looks here, Colin Brown. Yeah, no doubt, Dar. This Valley offense obviously punched it in once for a touchdown, then special teams came up with a huge score. But give credit to this Marshalltown offense. They've been inside the red zone twice and came away with no points. Tough break for this team. And, yeah, the first time uh, Ace Holmes was driving in, they kept moving and moving and kept picking up yards, but then they got all the Valley defenders around again. They poked the ball out, and they turned it over. And that was after Valley got it, went 63 yards on their second, on their first possession. It was a 26-yard pass to Anderson with 7.22 to go, and they score. Then... Uh, I say Marshalltown looked like they were come right back and answer, but then the fumble and Valley took it back, and then they they had to punt, and then uh, Marshalltown comes right back. They're driving down. They stalled out and went to try a 44-yard kick, so they got it down to what the 20 something, and then it was blocked in there. And um, who did we say blocked it? Uh, Gage yeah, I Olson. Yeah, Gage yeah, Olson Gage blocked Olson it, I believe it was Pinks it on the return. Isaiah Pinks returned it about 60 yards, and the extra point made it 14-0. Uh, then they drive down again, Marshalltown, and they, they got it down there in the red zone, and they go for it on fourth down and didn't get it. They turn over to Valley. There's 41 seconds going. I, I started to say, well, maybe they'll just run the clock out and be happy. No, then they throw a bomb down to the tight end. He gets it across the 50. They get another play, and then um, they just, uh, you know, clock ran out, or 
No, what? No, then they had the interception. That's right. Then they throw it deep to the tight end, hits him, and the hands bounces off in the end zone. Marshalltown gets it for the touchback, and and uh, that's where we stand at fourteen nothing. So, quite a active game, you know. <laughs> here, uh, unfortunately for Marshalltown on their side, they didn't get any points out of all those drives. Yeah, you're exactly right. It's been in favor of Valley here in the first half. A couple turnovers, obviously, but. As you mentioned, Dar, this Marshalltown offense has had chances to put the ball in the end zone, a fourth and eight. They go to Treshawn Brooks, the wide receiver, on a fade to the corner. Gets one hand up but just can't corral it. Oh, yeah, that was that was one, too, if he makes one of those uh, one-handed catches we've been seeing, you know. Maybe, but I'm he, he, he made a good attempt on the ball, just could not bring it in. You know, they score that. We got a whole different look at it going into halftime. Yeah, I'll tell you what, this game is closer than a two-score game at 14 nothing. And this Valley defense is going to come ready to play or have to come ready to play in the second half because Marshalltown showed they can move the ball down the field. And I think we're seeing a constant rain here still going on that that has some impact on that ball. It's got to be a little loosey-goosey wet out there. Yeah, no doubt. We obviously saw the fumble from Ace Holmes and then flip it around. Valley fumbled as well. The rain definitely mm-hmm. causing problems down there. And we don't kid yourself, we've definitely seen more run than pass here this evening. Well, we're at halftime, 14-0 Valley over Marshalltown. We'll take another break. Come back with more after this on CISN.TV. 1,500 vehicles on WaukeeChevy.com. Schottenkirk Chevy Waukee. If we don't have it, you can build it. Newly expanded service department means we're hiring. See the openings on WaukeeChevy.com. Schottenkirk Chevy Waukee. WaukeeChevy.com. We are. We are. We are so much more than an energy company. We are connectors, community protectors, and clean energy leaders. We are job creators, friends and neighbors, stewards of your dollars and savings. Yes, we. We. We are so much more. We are the energy behind your everyday. And we are obsessively, relentlessly at your service. I'm off to college. Rats. Hi, Joe the Car Guy with a reminder. Before you send your kids off to school, set up an appointment with Westside Auto. We check everything from tires to belts, fluids, hoses, wipers, and lights. 44 inspection points to help prevent that oh rats moment for your students. Call us today to set up your appointment. We'll have your kids off to school saying, For the best, head west. Westside West Auto. Auto. Ever have one of those awkward moments when a business disappointed you? You got ripped off? Didn't get what you expected? The Better Business Bureau can help you avoid these uncomfortable situations. BBB accredited businesses are honest, ethical, and reviewed annually by the BBB. Don't experience another awkward moment with a bad business. Trust the ones that operate with integrity. Look for the BBB seal. It's the sign of a better business. And find a better business anytime at BBB.org. We all love a good win. However small or ordinary, losing track of time finding yourself with a few extra dollars in your pocket, soaking up the perfect Iowa day. These are the everyday delights and small victories that make us smile. These are the moments that connect us all as Iowans. And these are the moments that, more often than not, start with Iowa's farm families and the corn they're growing. Because when corn grows Iowa, Iowans win. Back here at Valley, halftime 14 to nothing, and little sports history here with us tonight. Uh, KFJB 100 years ago broadcast the first game on radio, first high school game in the country on radio. Holy cow. And uh, the guys over here and, you know, been doing it since then. Now they're doing the online broadcast too with KFJB. But uh, And then there's also another big historical day today with uh, broadcasting. My birthday, of course. But... Uh, <laughs> Now, I wasn't around that first 100 years ago for do that first game. I did, despite what some people may think, the hair is gray, but I I didn't uh, do it back then. But it's quite a, to think back to all the changes, uh, even since I've been in the business, you used to have to crawl around and find these phone lines, and sometimes you'd get to a site and the phone line wouldn't work, so you'd go dig it around, (laughs) plug it in and figure it out. And then we had the the Marty where the wireless, where you did that without, and then... um, you know, we came to uh, when it came to doing the online stuff. I had a little trepidation about that at first because, uh, well, what's that going to do to radio and stuff? But you know, it works out well for people still 
they're in their car, they're listening on the radio to games, and then they can watch them too. And and uh, if you're out there watching the game on the phone while you're driving, no, don't do that. Put that down. We do not want you to do that. You know, if you lay it there and listen to us, yeah, but no. <laughs> yeah, but anyway, no a lot kidding. of a lot of history, and then. Uh, uh, my good friend Lance Reno, who died a couple years ago, did the games for years on uh, KFJB. And so they've, they've had a long history of, of broadcasting. So that's kind of cool. And then to have them here tonight and do the game on the anniversary of, of that is, is pretty cool. Yeah, that is very cool, Dar. And talk about going back 100 years. You mentioned it. Think, thinking about what that would have been like. And now here we are in 2022. Technology wins again. But unbelievable to think back on yeah and then you know you go to uh where now you can get on the computer and you don't even have to have somebody at the station you can run all your commercials and things on your computer back to the station and then you can do a game virtually anywhere on a cell phone if you had to you know you you don't have to have a hard wire phone line anymore so a lot of things have changed since back then yeah yeah no kidding Uh, earliest memories i have i think are sitting in the car Talking about technology advancing, the home phone. That's about the last thing I remember, which has nothing to do with radio. But I'll tell you what, it is um, it is crazy to see. Yeah. And it's, it is it is fun when you do games on the radio because then people have to kind of form it in their mind. But yeah, it's no also doubt. been good here doing the online stuff because people get to watch. And uh, we appreciate everybody watching, the grandpas and grandmas and cousins and aunts and uncles and you know, across the country can tune in and see, you know, their relatives play. So Yeah, and before we take another break, we can't let you go without happy birthday from Thank everybody you. here Thank at you. CISN. Holy cow, another year in the booth. I was expecting a card with money in it, but I guess uh, you forgot to – maybe you left that in your car. Yeah, we got okay. it downstairs oh, okay, for you. Okay, I'll tell okay. you what. Because I know you and Sean probably kicked in, and it's a pretty hefty amount there. But uh, <laughs> Me and Sean handled it, and you know what? Peter's got it. He'll be over yeah, here in a little yeah, bit. Yeah, yeah. Okay, well, let's <laughs> – Let's take a break. We'll be back uh, with more after this on CISN.TV. 75 years, Holt Service Trucks have hit the streets of central Iowa to help customers in need. It might be for plumbing, heating, cooling, a water heater, or the usual repairs and maintenance. We've done that with quality work from quality employees who bring passion and personality to the job. That's the whole difference. It gives me great pride to see how our company has grown from the seeds of success my grandfather planted in 1947. That's why more and more Central Iowans are saying, let Holt handle that. Hi, this is Chris from Fireplace Superstore, and it's going to be an interesting patio furniture season this year. We have ordered a ton of merchandise, but due to supply chain issues, it's coming in a truckload at a time all summer long. If you want the best patio furniture, check early and check often. If you want to custom order your furniture, get in here as soon as you can to give your furniture the best chance to arrive this summer. Fireplace Superstore, Iowa's best patio furniture selection, just east of I-35 on Douglas Avenue. Not all used vehicles are created equal. DRM and certified used vehicles have a big advantage. What sets us apart is that all used vehicles receive a 175 point inspection. Carfax report, two oil changes, collision deductible coverage, and wheel dent and windshield repair. Also, all DRM and certified come with two warranties. A one year, 12,000 mile bumper to bumper, and a two year, 100,000 mile powertrain. DRM and Ford Indianola, DRM and Automotive Knoxville, DRM and Auto.com. Do you know what the best part about being a dog is? You can hear disaster before it even happens. You know what they say about disaster. Sometimes it can inspire a symphony. An honest day's work deserves an honest day's treat. No extra charge. And that is why we choose honest wrenches. No extra charge. And it's how service should be. Back here at halftime at Valley Stadium. It is homecoming, so they're bringing out the court and everything here in the rain. And uh, that's always kind of fun, too, and to see everybody get fired up for that. Uh, of course, at night with the umbrellas and raincoats on there and then the coolest nights we've had for football. But not going to complain because sometimes you get into late October <laughs> 
<laughs> and before you get to November and you're freezing, you know, and stuff. But uh, Yeah, no kidding. Fall is definitely here, Dar, and winter is coming. I can tell you that. But like you said, such a cool evening for these kids down here, homecoming. What an exciting time. Really just fun. Well, the forecasts here are talking about we could warm back up again and be warmer into September and October. We're just in a little bit of cool trough right now, so it'll be interesting. So let's go go into Bobcat locker room right now. What's Coach saying to him after that first half? Yeah, you know, you look at the offense, Darn. I think you got to keep preaching what you did, obviously, there in the first half. Guys were moving the ball down the field. Our offensive line's getting a great push. You look at Holmes and Houston, they're both using their legs to really get upfield. you got to continue to do that and then find ways to incorporate the pass in. And then defensively, Think about it. Obviously, the one touchdown for Valley comes off a special teams play. So the defense for yeah, Marshalltown. Pretty good. And they, they, right. they dodged a big bullet at the end there where they yeah, they got that interception for the defense. Uh, for Gary Swenson on the on the other side, what's he saying to his Tigers in locker room? Yeah, you got to think you love that opening drive. The first drive they had there in the first quarter, they go right down. It's a touchdown to Anderson, the tight end. You got to continue to get him involved. And the defense needs to continue to do what they've done as well. Last week, obviously, allowing only six to Waukee. And then, obviously, Blank and Marshalltown here in the first half continue to play sound, fundamental defense here in the rain. We, we've seen the Marshalltown able to run on him, but when he dropped back to pass, he was not getting any time. They got a couple sacks, so that's one good thing defensively there for um, Valley. They just did not give uh, Houston any time at all. He had a problem back there. Yeah. That, <laughs> see, get, get what I did there. Houston, you got to – okay. Uh, <laughs> you are on it tonight. I'll you got to give it to me on my birthday. I can throw those stinkers out there. Yeah, but anyway, yeah. So they, you know, they've seen some good things. If they can slow the run a little better, then uh, you know. But again, and then too, uh, you got to hand it to Ace. He is just he runs low and he runs hard, and you're not going to stop him by just reaching out an arm against him. Yeah, amen, Dar. That's the thing. He obviously had the one fumble, a tough break. But on that play alone, four tacklers or defenders for Valley in on him, trying to rip the ball free. He is not going down on the first contact or first contact. There's going to be multiple defenders to bring him down to the ground. He runs low, he runs with power, and he runs with good vision and breakaway speed when he can get in the open field. He is a fun playmaker to watch. And uh, we were just talking here a little bit about college game. A big game for uh, Iowa State against Baylor. We'll see. You know, Iowa State's so far shown okay. But now you step up. Big boy time, you know, in the Big 12 and, and uh, see what they can do. And uh, Hunter Deckers has looked real good stepping in there. So that should be an interesting game. Yeah, no doubt. I'll tell you what, Ames is going to be high flying tomorrow. That's going to be a fun atmosphere. Obviously, Baylor and Dave Aranda comes in there. That's a Big 12 team that likes to play Big 10 football. They're going to run it at Iowa State. They got a stout defense, and you said it. Deckers, he goes on the road to Kennick a few weeks ago. Had never been there before. Picks up a huge win, the first of Matt Campbell's career. Iowa State, definitely an impressive team here in the early going. But the Big 12 kicks off tomorrow, but it's a whole brand new ball game. And then for Iowa, the the question is, how many punts where <laughs> will they be? And <laughs> that is a bit. And can the offense score like they did against Nevada? And uh, you open up Big Ten play, and that that's when things get tougher too for Iowa. Yeah, no doubt. Big Ten play, obviously things ramp up. Both teams looking to get that first win. Rutgers lost 19 straight home Big Ten games. Dar, I saw that stat today. Had to think, blink twice. Couldn't even imagine or believe what was going on there. So they're going to be hungry, a sellout. But you said it, the punters, they've been the keys to both teams' success so far. But I will tell you, I don't care how how bad they sometimes look early in the season. It seems like Kirk Ferentz somehow they manufacture wins. They don't have the greatest offense sometimes, but, you know, they sometimes times find a way to win ball games. Yeah, he does. Kirk Ferentz, he's got an identity there in a program that he's built on his shoulders. And you said it last year, obviously, obviously everybody had questions going into that Maryland game on the road. And Iowa goes in there and thumps the Terrapins. I think this team will rally tomorrow, pick up a huge win, but it is going to be fun and exciting. Looks like they're naming the queen here, but we don't have anybody down there to tell us exactly what's going on. And they get the royalty here. And yeah, just a cool event when everything is said and done, Dar. A great weekend for Valley. Well, we're just not too far away from getting the teams back out here and kicking it off. We're 
Should be an exciting second half. Stick with us. We'll be back with more after this on CISN.TV. When you need to conquer the drifts on your property, get the job done your way. The Western Defender Compact Snowplow. All the professional grade features in just the right size for your mid-sized pickup or SUV. Easy to attach and easy to use. Get the performance to plow like this and finish like this. Western. More jobs done faster. Visit Truck Equipment Inc. today at truckequipmentinc.com. Not all used vehicles are created equal. DRMAN certified used vehicles have a big advantage. What sets us apart is that all used vehicles receive a 175 point inspection. Carfax report, two oil changes, collision deductible coverage, and wheel dent and windshield repair. Also, all DRMAN certified come with two warranties. A one year 12,000 mile bumper to bumper and a two year 100,000 mile powertrain. DRMAN Ford Indianola, DRMAN Automotive Knoxville, DRMANauto.com. For 75 years, Holt Service Trucks have hit the streets of central Iowa to help customers in need. It might be for plumbing, heating, cooling, a water heater, or the usual repairs and maintenance. We've done that with quality work from quality employees who bring passion and personality to the job. That's the whole difference. It gives me great pride to see how our company has grown from the seeds of success my grandfather planted in 1947. That's why more and more central Iowans are saying, let Holt handle that. Mornings, they can be hectic. Let's go. So can your car, so to get a free pickup, drop off, or delivery. Head over to Honest Wrenches and their loaner vehicles. No extra charge. Find your peace of mind with even more wonderful services. Every vehicle that comes in gets a full visual inspection and a five year, 50,000 mile warranty. No extra charge. Head on over to Honest Wrenches. No extra charge, and it's how service should be. We all love a good win, however small or ordinary, losing track of time, finding yourself with a few extra dollars in your pocket, soaking up the perfect Iowa day. These are the everyday delights and small victories that make us smile. These are the moments that connect us all as Iowans. And these are the moments that, more often than not, start with Iowa's farm families and the corn they're growing. Because when corn grows Iowa, Iowans win. Back here at Valley Stadium. Coming out a little bit longer halftime because of the uh, homecoming festivities here tonight. And Valley leading 14 to nothing. They took their first drive down 63 yards and then it was a 26 yard pass to the tight end Anderson. And with 7.22 to go, they were up seven nothing. Bobcats came right back. Marshalltown did, drove it down, and then uh, fumbled as uh, they turned it over. And Valley got it back. And then um, a little bit later, Marshalltown came down to try the 44 yard field goal. And it was blocked and returned by Isaiah Pink 66, 60 yards uh, with seven. 14 to go, yeah, PAT was good, and now here's Gomez kicking it off for Marshalltown. It's gonna be a short kick, taking about the 20, up across the 35, 40, 45, 46 yard line. 20 to the 45, so a 25 yard kickoff. 
And that'll be first and 10 for Valley at the 45, as you see. Picked it up and just Jaleen Dorn, Jaleel Dorn rather, picked it up. And a great heads up just uh, returned it out there. And there, here they go, first and 10 at the 45 to start the second half. Right up the middle, plowing through there is Mason, and he gets 11 yards on first down. So the Tigers have come out of the locker room with a purpose here. Yeah, that's a good sign for this Valley offense, Dar. Darius Mason, get him going early and often here in the second half. That time, banging through tacklers to pick up a first down. I think Coach Swenson probably talked him a little bit about finishing on offense and keeping up, like you said, on that first drive. And here they come out. They're going to send uh, two receivers to the left. Aiden Price, one of them out there. Now they flip the tight end over from the left to the right side for Michael Provenza. And hands off. And plowing right up is Darius Mason for about a six-yard pickup. Yeah, another good play call here. Feed the big fella in the backfield. It's Darius Mason picks up. Looks like about five more on that carry, Dar. Or six, excuse me. Another good play call. So, and Mason, we talked about it. He's uh, had several yards rushing and a few passing, but no TDs yet on the season. And here's Provenza. They flip that tight end again. You see him from the left to the right. Then hand off to Mason. Gets a big block hole, cuts it up. Down to the 20, back outside. 15, 10. And ripped down at the five-yard line. Well, I tell you what, another great play call and big-time run by Darius Mason. Dar, you just called it. He has not found the end zone yet this season, the leading rusher for this Valley offense. As we take another look, he cuts it back left and just green turf in front of him, but he's wrestled down by Rebick. I thought he was going to get in. Yeah. Well, you saw him take a quick peek back. Is anybody behind me? But they came from the side there, but... Yeah, good run. And so now it's first and five at the five, first and goal. And off right up through the middle, touchdown. There it is. He's on the board. Five yard touchdown. And right on cue, you said it, Dar, his first touchdown run of the season. The do it all back for this Valley offense. It's about time he got in the end zone. See it here again. He looked a little winded there, didn't he? He was bending over right before the play. But then it's just like giving the ball, follow the big lineman in there, and Valley comes out. And it's like, let's take it right in there. Here's the extra point, up and good. And that makes it 21 nothing here on CISN.TV. We are. we are. We are so much more than an energy company. We are connectors, community protectors, and clean energy leaders. We are job creators, friends, and neighbors, stewards of your dollars and savings. Yes, we. We. We are so much more. We are the energy behind your everyday. And we are obsessively, relentlessly at your service. For 75 years, Holt Service Trucks have hit the streets of Central Iowa to help customers in need. It might be for plumbing, heating, cooling, a water heater, or the usual repairs and maintenance. We've done that with quality work from quality employees who bring passion and personality to the job. That's the whole difference. It gives me great pride to see how our company has grown from the seeds of success my grandfather planted in 1947. That's why more and more Central Iowans are saying, let Holt handle that. And the return by Rebic up across the 20, 25, and out to the 34-yard line. So good field position to start for Marshalltown. But a couple of things, that squib kick that was picked up and run back by Valley. But then Valley, it was uh, three plays, 45 yards, all to Derek Mason. And he just uh, rammed it in there, or Darius Mason, excuse me. 
and uh, Valley gets right back on the board. Yeah, no kidding, Dar. Two things that really stood out on that drive. First off, Darius Mason getting in the end zone, some big-time runs, and then the offensive line setting the tone up front here in the second half. So here's Marshalltown. They come out, their first possession here, and and, uh, trailing now by 21. They've been able to move the ball tonight. Here's that inside handoff, looking for room. Rebic, he turns the corner across the 40 to 45, and a big pick up there. Yeah, good pick up from Rebic, 27 in white, obviously taking the end around over the left side. And he is one of the key playmakers for this offense. Obviously, Holmes has been the mainstay guy in the backfield, but Rebic more than capable as he takes off there for a big first down carry. 11 yards makes it first and 10 at the 45 for the Bobcats. You say Rebic has got 140 yards. And over the right side. And big pile up there. Everybody jumping on now. As a <laughs> big surreal fountain trying to jump in there on the bottom. Boy, he sure did. Dar. He is a big boy up front for this Valley defensive line, making a big time stop there. And and Marshalltown here in the second half, I think they have got to start looking at the pass game. You take a look at Treshawn Brooks. He's one of the guys to keep an eye on here. You're down three scores. I know the weather is not perfect. But you might have to go to the air. Maybe they get a quick strike if they can here because, uh, I mean, they've been picking up chunks of yardage on the ground, but that winds the clock down, and when you're down by three scores, you got to maybe get a big play here. Houston drops back, rolls to his right, throws across, and almost picked off. Wow. Andrew Price was back there as it was tipped, and then Price almost got it, and then Rebic almost got it. Yeah, I tell you what, we take a look at the replay here. I like how they roll Houston out to the right. I think he was actually looking for Smith on that play. Yeah. Rebic jumped in there, and then the ball obviously caromed off several guys, both Valley and Marshalltown. It was the big carom at the end of the half that went off the tight end for Valley and caught, uh, intercepted then in the end zone for Marshalltown that kept it from being 21 nothing there, but now Marshalltown, third and eight at the 47, a big third down for them here early in the second half. They don't want to give it up. Houston drops back, got pressure on, throws across the middle, has a man caught at the 40. And Smith gets hammered down. Fountain just nails him. Whoa. What a hit by Fountain. The big fella delivers the goods over the middle. That hurt up here. Watch the replay here. Throws it across there. Smith going around. Has him hung up and found just levels him. Whoa. (laughs) Talk about finishing a play, Dar. Fountain right there. He did so. Randy, we may have a play of the week for you there. Here's Houston again. Hands off on the draw. Get a couple. That's Ring in the ball game. Yeah, I believe it was Tate Ring on that carry from Marshalltown. He didn't get much inside, though. So. Yeah, no, he didn't, darn. And this is now where the Bobcat offense wants to be second and third and long. But you called it. They went to the pass there, and they found Smith and a big pickup. And now... Yeah, we'll see if they can do so again. We'll do it again here and get looking to get into the end zone. The Bobcats, for the first time, they've dribbled down into the red zone a couple times. Turn it over on downs. They had a blocked field goal. Hand off there and trying to slide under the defenders. Ring again. And not much going in there. No, that's sound fundamental defense from Valley holding ring to one on that carry, and he was just bottled up over the right side. I don't see Ace Holmes out there. I wonder if he's something. Well, yeah, that's the big question. You hit it right on the head, Dar. Where is the starting running back from Marshalltown, Ace Holmes? Let's see him over in the sidelines right now, but they come out, ring back in there. Holmes is not out there. Here's Houston. Trips left. Drops back, little pressure. Houston will 
cut up. He's going to go ahead and he'll be short. Did he lose it? No, they're going to say he was down. But he'll be short of the first down yardage by about three. Boy, I'll tell you what, Dar. I know Houston didn't have much time to get rid of that football. But you look on the top of the screen and far right, Treshawn Holmes, or excuse me, Treshawn Brooks had beat his man deep. But again, nowhere to go with the football for the quarterback, Houston, under immediate pressure from that Valley front. Boy, if that this were college NFL, we'd be looking at the end of that play a little bit there. That ball was starting to come up as he went down. They hit the ground and it came out. So fourth and three here again. They're going to go for it, looks like, on fourth down. Rolls Houston throws, has a man Rebic out there, and he... Lays a hit on the defender as he gets down to the 25. And a little little popping going on out there right now. Yeah, absolutely. And that's a good play call. And they ran that in the first half. Dar Rebic sneaking out, sneaking out. from yeah, the backfield right. right there. Beautiful call and huge first down. Marshalltown desperately needed to convert midway through the third. So now Marshalltown first and 10 at the 25. Two receivers left, Rebick and Smith. Brooks on the right side, looks, he throws back across and a little high over the head. And that was Carter. Yeah, Houston Hunter. just sailed that one. He had him out in the flat to the left side, just overshot him. Tough break for Marshalltown. Sets up second and another 10. Here with 5-12 left in the third. Yeah, that was Carter Hunt out there. So, second and 10 at the 25, and they really, really would like to get seven here. They don't want to settle for the field goal at this point. Here's Houston. Ring left of the quarterback. Drops back, looking, looking, looking. Now, under pressure, rolls out of it, up the right side. He's going to be close to the first down. And they're marking him just short of the 15. I think he had to get there. Let's see. Yeah, it's going to be an interesting spot, Dar. Boy, they did mark him very, very close. And it looks like they will put him just shy. But, again, Houston running for his life as we take another <laughs> look. Those safeties creeping down in the box for Valley. Houston under immediate pressure. That time he takes off, picks up nine. Ramez Naba come running in, <laughs> running in there. But Houston kind of left the big defensive lineman in the dust, so didn't he? He there. sure did. <laughs> okay, third and one at the 16 for the Bobcats. Houston drops back. No, he hands it off to draw. Up front, ring, pushing forward, touchdown. Kate Ring for 16 yards out. What a run from Tate Ring as he celebrates in the end zone his first TD of the season. A beautiful play call. And just what the doctor ordered, Marshalltown gets on the board with six. Let's see it here again. Oh, that's that snap again. <laughs> to the back instead of the quarterback. And I watched the quarterback and he, yeah. Yeah, he faked me out as well, Dar. I sure thought it was a handoff. But he, and he showed a little power getting through that last man there, didn't he? Yeah, he sure did. Barreling his way into the end zone. As the Kick extra is up point. and good. Yeah, it does sail through. We got a 21-7 game here on CISN.TV. When did strength become an ego thing? Strength is about more than you. It's about grit, work ethic, carrying your own weight, and still rising to new challenges, whether or not they happen during regular business hours. Because even for the strongest, there are no guarantees. But for those who wake up with the streetlights to make sure the world keeps moving, Western makes one promise. More jobs done faster. Visit Truck Equipment Inc. today at truckequipmentinc.com. For 75 years, Holt Service Trucks have hit the streets of Central Iowa to help customers in need. It might be for plumbing, heating, cooling, a water heater, or the usual repairs and maintenance. 
We've done that with quality work from quality employees who bring passion and personality to the job. That's the whole difference. It gives me great pride to see how our company has grown from the seeds of success my grandfather planted in 1947. That's why more and more Central Iowans are saying, let Holt handle that. And we go to the kickoff. The Bobcats just scoring. Kick it down, take it at the four-yard line by Valley. Up across the 20, 25, 30. Outside is Price. And he breaks it all the way up to just shy of the 50 as Price took it. And Man, that's a big momentum killer when you get a big return like that, isn't it? Tell you what, Dar, the Valley special teams has been huge here tonight. They block a field goal for a score. And then here, look at the blocking out in front for Aiden Price, who we haven't heard much of, but this time no, he gets over the left side. But we know he's got that speed, and you get him a little lane there, and, man, he was gone. Yeah, he sure does. That's a big-time return for this Valley offense. So and now 45-yard return. Yeah, excuse me. Now can the Marshalltown defense step up and get a stop? Marshalltown gets on the board. There took it 66 yards. There's the fake now handoff up the middle. Breaking through is Mason. Or excuse me, that's not Mason. That is, uh, let's see. Well, there's a handoff. That's uh, 29, right? Yeah, it sure looked like Darius Mason, but it was 28. 20, 28. Yard. That is. Uh, Damon Head. Okay. And there's a handoff. He runs it outside. Finds some room down to the 20. Yeah, another big time carry for Head. So tell you what, on first down. He has major yardage over the right side, and here he goes again, another first down for Valley. So two runs here. And they get it down to the 20. Yeah, we take another look. That's good patience by Head, just finding his way into the secondary, second line of defense for that defense. Valley just churning away on the ground. This offense really responding after the score there by... Marshalltown. Two receivers left. They bring the tight end over from the right to the left side. Pitch it back. Head, he's looking for room. Still going, still trying to get outside. And there's Ace, who was that Ace or no? That was eight. That yeah, wasn't one. I believe that it was. That was Trayshawn Brooks, wasn't okay, it? Okay, was yeah, no, you, you yes, it, yeah. it looked like eight. Yeah, Brooks or, and Ace was in there. I know yeah. that. The, the that do one and the eight kind of meld together, but. Uh, yeah, they sure do. He he took a breather. He took on that a breather last on drive. that. Yeah, and Ring did a good job. He drove it into the end zone. But um, Holmes has been their heavy back through the first part of the game. Now they got a heavy formation here to the right for Valley stacked up over there. That triple formation. They can do a lot of stuff out of that. Send the man in motion, fake it, and then hand it off up the middle to Head. So. Kind of yeah. turnabout. Um, Ace got a little rest. Now Darius Mason getting a little rest. They're bringing Head in, and these backup backs have done a good job. Yeah, they sure have. Head on this drive has been terrific. And you look at the other side from Marshalltown, possibly just trying to get Ace Holmes a breath on offense, yeah. knowing that they're going to have to get stops on the defensive side as Valley inside the red zone now. We'll see if this Bobcat D can stand tall and at least force a field goal attempt. So again, they send... Two receivers to the left. And hand it off. Coming back the other way. Price. Price tries to turn the corner. Puts his head down at the 10. Pushes the head down to about the six-yard line. And credit the Bobcats for stringing that out and not letting him get all the way around the corner. Yeah, they set the edge, darn. Aiden Price kept trying to get outside, get outside. He finally did as we take another look. But unfortunately for Valley, there was nowhere left to go for the stellar senior as they force him out of bounds. Yeah, it looks like just outside the five. Brings up a first and, well, it looks like six, or, or first that, and goal, rather. And that'll go down as passing yardage since he threw it forward instead of the run there. But So first and six at the six-yard line for Valley. 
And off to head, a little bit of a, not a smooth handoff there, but he still gets some good yardage out of it, but it wasn't quite clean. They kind of bumped into each other. Yeah, the QB running back exchange didn't look great, but nonetheless, head just squeezes ahead for it looks like about three, turning and twisting. It's going to be second and goal from just outside the two. And now head comes back out of there. Yeah, Dar, I believe that is Darius Mason now back in the backfield. Yep, 22. 22 is back in there. And it's got a lead back in there. Ballard, there's a handoff. Mason, touchdown. Well, we just were talking about how he hadn't uh, gotten on the board. Now he's got two here. Yeah, he answered the call from up in the booth, Dar. We were talking about how he hadn't <laughs> been in the end zone. That's twice tonight. And so 27 seconds to go here. You see it again. And, man, that was an easy walk in there as everybody kind of dove into the middle there, and then Mason just easily ran over the right side for the touchdown. Yeah, the floodgates open for Darius Mason there. That's one of the easiest scores he'll get. Stellar sophomore back, now found the end zone twice here tonight, and the lead goes back to 21, an impressive drive for Valley. Here's the PAT. Up and good, and it's 28 to 7 here. Valley. Well, the good news is for Marshalltown, they scored. The bad news is you woke the Valley offense up, and they responded right away. Yeah, one answer from this Valley offense, and they did it on the ground. First it was head, and then they get deep into the red zone, and they go back to their bread and butter, Darius Mason. Yeah, well, and then Price gave them the short field on the return there, so they started out at the 49, so just a uh, 51 yard drive, and they put it in the uh, end zone there. So, yeah, that's a good point, Dar. This Valley special teams, the unsung hero tonight, they block a field goal attempt for a score and then set up that huge return from Price. So, Valley makes it 28 to 7 here, and we still got 27 seconds to go in the third quarter. Man, this has been a game of burst, hasn't it? <laughs> Back and forth we go, no kidding. Whichever offense has been hottest has got on the board. Rebic back deep to receive for the Tigers. Here's the kick. And he's going to take it about the one. Comes up across the 15, 20, and is wrestled down right there. But, boy, I tell you what, Darn, not much room for Rebic to run. Once he crossed about the 15, it was a wall of Valley special teams defenders. As we take another look at Rebic there, I think he did clear the 20 or just get to it, but terrific coverage from Valley. So now the Marshalltown offense, can they do it again here? Because you almost feel like they got to answer now because you're down three scores. You were, you know, they get that touchdown and you're only down two, but then Valley answers right back. Yeah, unfortunately for Marshalltown, your defense couldn't get a stop. You're back down 21, and your offense has got to find a way to answer quick. Here's Houston. Since man in motion, fakes it, hands it off to the up back. And ring back in there. And that will likely be the last play, I think it is, of the third quarter. A one-yard pickup. Yeah, good play by Hutchinson there from Valley. He came around and wrapped up ring around the ankles. So let's take a break. We'll be back with the fourth quarter here on CISN.TV. Used vehicles are created equal. DRMAN certified used vehicles have a big advantage. What sets us apart is that all used vehicles receive a 175-point inspection. Carfax report, two oil changes, collision deductible coverage, and wheel dent and windshield repair. Also, all DRMAN certified come with two warranties. A one-year, 12,000-mile bumper-to-bumper, and a two-year, 100,000-mile powertrain. The Armin Ford Indianola, the Armin Automotive Knoxville, the Armin Auto.com. Mornings, they can be hectic. Let's go. So can your car, so to get a free pickup, drop-off, or delivery. Head over to Honest Wrenches. And their loaner vehicles? No extra charge. Find your peace of mind with even more wonderful services. Every vehicle that comes in gets a full visual inspection and a five-year, 50,000-mile warranty. No extra charge. 
Head on over to Honest Wrenches. No extra charge, and it's how service should be. We go to the fourth quarter. You see the green there. Okay, there's the players. They're here. <laughs> and it still looks like uh, some mist going on up in the lights. We can kind of see it here. You can't really tell looking just down on the field, but it, uh, Colin, that's been uh, it's been uh, constant here. Colin Brown, Dart Angels have been constant throughout the game, just a little rain coming down. Yeah, it has. It's been consistent from start now to the point where we're getting to the finish, Dar, and it's definitely played a role. Dalen Houston comes out. Throws it out quickly. Got a man there at the 25. He breaks a couple tackles. Slides it up. Treshawn Brooks. He's been kind of quiet tonight. They find him there. Yeah, he sure has, and they need to get him involved here in the fourth. He's a big-time playmaker out wide for this Marshalltown offense. They tried in the first half, and unfortunately he couldn't come down with the ball in the end zone, but they need to get him rolling here late in this game. Yeah, wow, what a big play that was. They, they uh, you know, come down, and it's off his hands in the end zone. He had to go up high, and now it's third and one. A big play here again for the Bobcats. Dalen Houston. Ring with him. Gives it to him. Ring is met immediately and knocked down by Mason Ray. Ray says no way. He, yeah, he talk about and, Mason Ray. Man. He just ate that one up. He, boy, I'll tell you what, Dar, he was a step or two into the backfield by the time Ring had that carry. As we yeah. take another look. Look at him here on the edge. That he immediately, just, yeah. yeah he was into that defender. block, but he stepped out right away, didn't he? Yeah, he sure I, did. That's I a got a feeling both play. these lines had a little talking to at halftime, seems like, didn't it? Yeah, it <laughs> seems like they've had a fire lit under them. And here we go, Dara, fourth and three for Marshalltown. Well, we'll see what – see if they try to pull him off. Nope, they're just going to drop back and go with uh, Houston. Now goes – oh, man, I thought he might have been able to run and pick that up. But he throws it, and that'll turn it over on downs. Yeah, I tell you what, Dar, he stepped up into the pocket, and it looked like he looked, did have a lane. It looked like he had a lane. At least he only needed a couple there. But, you know, it, it's easy to say up here when you don't see those big black shirts coming yeah. in on you. But Yeah, Valley's so. got size up front. And I'll give him credit, Brooks. Treshawn Let's Brooks, if we take another look, it looks like he was open in but between then, the coverage. Yeah, but then right there, if he, you know, he – comes up and steps up and puts his head down he might get it the second time tonight they've turned it over on downs and valley gets it in great field position here with 10 31 to play in the ball game first and 10 at the 27 and there's a flag right away yeah we're gonna have a false start here start Dar, on valley. valley if you're this coaching staff that's not a good start to this drive you're trying to put this game away with 10 31 left to play up three scores is they'll take it back five yards, and they'll set things up here to the 32. You know, that's that's the first offensive penalty we've had. Valley's had three. They've had two face masks and a holding, but offensively, the first one tonight. Here's Ravenza gets it off, cutting outside, and pawing across inside the 20 is Mason. Yeah, there's Mason again. Hops up after another terrific carry on first and 15. Great blocking out in front over the he's, left side. He's got a little limp, little hitch in the get along there as uh, taking a few hits here tonight. Set out for a while, and Damon Head did a nice job coming in for him. But you notice he came back in, and when it got close to the goal line, and he, and he got yeah, it in there. Time to score the football. He, put he, in he heard us talking about he hadn't been in the end zone yet, but he got, got in there. So here's Provenza. With Mason with it. Two receivers out there to the right. And he fakes, rolls right up ahead. Touchdown! Valley. 18 yard run by Provenza. What a play call. And that was a quarterback keeper all the way, Dar. Michael Provenza showing off his legs. And I'll tell you what, that first step and burst that the Valley yeah. quarterback shows is unmatched. That's he scoots in for six. His fourth rushing touchdown of the season. Yeah, we look take another Just, look. Yeah, that was a straight draw all the way. Stopped to count and then went up, and all the defensive backs are looking at those receivers, and it was just – I might have even got down to the five on that one. Never know. Speed. Today's your birthday. You might yeah, have scored. Was, yeah. <laughs> well, many birthdays ago. <laughs> yeah. And the PAT is good. 
And we'll take a break. Be back with more after this on CISN.TV. What they call a snow day, we call a work day. And the resume I leave behind is nothing but clean pavement. That's why I stay prepared for all the depths of winter with a plow that won't back down from a little overtime and takes care of business beyond nine to five and then five to nine without skipping a beat. A plow you'd call a real MVP, the kind only Western builds to get more jobs done faster. Visit Truck Equipment Inc. today at truckequipmentinc.com. Free Godfather's Pizza begins with the download. Order through my new online ordering app and start earning free pizza and sides. It's easy. Download the Godfather's Pizza online ordering app today. Do it. Over 1,300 vehicles on WaukeeChevy.com. Schottenkirk Chevy Waukee. If we don't have it, you can build it. Newly expanded service department means we're hiring. See the openings on WaukeeChevy.com. Schottenkirk Chevy Waukee. WaukeeChevy.com. Back here at Valley Stadium. And it'll be first and 10 at the 20 after the touchback for yeah, Marshalltown. We'll, yeah, we'll see what this Marshalltown offense brings to the table here with 9.39 left to play. Dar obviously got in the end zone here this half for the first time, but then Valley answered with two straight scores themselves. They're going to be talking about that first half and some mistakes and, and not finishing drives for Marshalltown, which would have really made it a tight ball game. And now, and no, keeps it with it. Houston keeps it, goes around the edge there and gets a big run there. Yeah, that's Dalen Houston using his legs, and I'm actually a little surprised, Dar. I thought they'd get him more involved in the run game in the first half and then early in the second half. I'd expect to see a lot more of that here in the fourth quarter. And Jasek Lee was in the backfield that time. And Marshalltown, first and 10 at the 32. And there's that up snap, and that time Valley diagnosed it pretty good there. Big number 65 was all over it. And um, yeah, I'll tell you what, Dar, you got to give credit to this front seven for Valley. They have really snuffed things out here late in the second half. As there they get the tackle. And that makes it second and eight. That's the 34 yard line on the Bobcat side of the field. They have it. Shotgun formation for Dale and Houston. Houston. Fakes the handoff. Now he stops and then he gets ripped down. I don't know if he was going to look to pass, but it sure looked like he was dropping back to possibly look downfield for Brooks. And then all of a sudden he slipped on the turf, darn, at that point. He was gobbled up and wrestled down. It's going to be third and long for this Bobcat offense. So third and six at the 36. And yeah, I'll tell you what here, Dar. They need to look at Houston and his legs on this play. Treshawn Brooks at the bottom of the formation as well, but then it's like we're going to have a timeout. Call the timeout. Let's take a break. You're watching football on CISN.TV. Godfather's Pizza begins with the download. Order through my new online ordering app and start earning free pizza and sides. It's easy. Download the Godfather's Pizza online ordering app today. Do it. Do you know what the best part about being a dog is? You can hear disaster before it even happens. You know what they say about disaster. Sometimes it can inspire a symphony. An honest day's work deserves an honest day's treat. No extra charge. And that is why we choose honest wrenches. No extra charge. And it's how service should be. 
Over 1,300 vehicles on WaukeeChevy.com. Schottenkirk Chevy Waukee. If we don't have it, you can build it. Newly expanded service department means we're hiring. See the openings on WaukeeChevy.com. Schottenkirk Chevy Waukee. WaukeeChevy.com. Back to action here. Third and six at the 36 for Marshalltown. 8.08 to play here in the ball game. Dropping back, Houston. Throws it out deep, has a man. Nice catch. Yeah, and beautiful ball there by Houston under pressure, and he hits Treshawn Brooks down the sideline for a huge conversion. And they finally hook up outside there. But, you know, they've, they've rotated in a few new defensive linemen. We'll see the replay here. And there it is. Early in the game, he was dropping back. He had no time at all. That you know, they were in on him. But now a little different here. They've rotated a few other guys in, and now he had a little time. When we see what happens when that happens, first and ten at the thirty here for Marshalltown. Yeah, I think we're going to have offsides here yep, on the defense. On Valley. Yeah, encroachment rather. So they've got some new, get some new people in there. Yeah, you're right, Dar. That Trent Bender is in there, one of them. Uh, let's see. Look down my list here. Ooh. 50 is Cole Weeble. Um, is that 55? S yeah, 65, which is Jared Fisher. So... Clock stopped, 8 one to go. Marshalltown, Houston, hands off to Ring. Ring slips a tackle and then is knocked down there by uh, Andrew Price. Yeah, Price with a beautiful shoestring tackle, wrapping up and bringing Ring down on the left side. Brings up second and two. I had it on the tip of my tongue. I couldn't say it. I had to look at the... I, Price, he is he closes quickly. Yeah, he sure does. That's a beautiful tackle. Sets up second, and it looks like two Dar for this Marshalltown offense. Trying to score, get it in again. And of course for Valley, the clock keeps rolling. That's on their side right now with that lead. Here's Houston. Hands it off, looking for room. Ring. Now cuts it up and He'll get the first down as he gets just across the 20-yard line. And a ring really, really waited for that hole and then shot through it, didn't he? Yeah, good patience and vision there from ring, and he picks up a big-time first down. Let's see, Dar, if they go back to the air here. A couple good wide receivers out wide. You got Brooks, just had a big 34-yard grab, and then Corey Smith as well. Looks like man coverage across the board. Here's Houston. Ring behind him there. Tries to go with the hard count. This time Valley doesn't jump, so he steps back. High snap, hands it off to Ring. Ring looking for room behind those blockers, and it's going to be shut down there. Didn't let him get outside. Isaiah Pinks came up and closed that off. Yeah, the corner didn't let him get to the boundary on that play, and Pinks just wrestles him down. Another terrific tackle. One well, of this Valley defense standing tall here as they near the red zone. Pinks, the guy who returned that block field goal, as you see again here. He comes right up and, yep, didn't let him get outside. Second and 13 now for the Bobcats. Well, pressure now on Houston. He's uh, wrapped up in the pocket there. I think he's going to go down. Yeah, it's going to be another sack, and I believe it was 65 Jared, and black. Jared Fisher, yep. Yeah, Jared Fisher. Jared Fisher was in there. He's got some good time here in this fourth quarter. Yeah, I tell you what, Dar, he's been all over the field here in the second half, and again, it was the pocket just collapsing on Houston. Nowhere to go with the football. That's the way it was in that first half when he went back to pass. Here you see him. You got one, two, three, and that's it. You know, and that's hardly time to, you know, if you got that quick two-step drop and you can get rid of it and you got the release of 
a Brady or somebody that works, but not here. Yeah, not enough time to throw the ball in that pocket, just closing in on him in a hurry. Forces third and long. Third and 17. Now he'll get that cutback play again. Ring. Going to get a few yards. Yeah, right. I think that was Castle on the tackle there, and good way to hold his ground or, or hold his ground on the left side. They obviously go with the delayed handoff as Ring went back to the left side. Right here, field goal really doesn't do you a lot of good. You might as well go for it because you give it up, you're only giving it up around the 20. So, Yeah, nothing to lose if you're Marshalltown. Fourth and 12, we'll give it a shot. Three to the left, one receiver to the right, which is Treshawn Brooks. Looks like Valley's going to bring some pressure here. As they cheat up and then they jump. That'll give them five. It won't give them the first down, but it'll make it a little, make it go from a fourth and 12 to a fourth and seven. Yeah, I don't even think that was one defensive lineman, Dar. That was several. <laughs> yeah, on all that of them. One. Those new guys in there, they're getting their playing time. They're making the most out of it here. But, of course, they're going to hear that and then when they look at the the film here and say, hey, you guys, you're in there. We like the aggressiveness, but let's not give them free yards. So fourth and seven here, clock rolling. Again, under four minutes to play. Marshalltown trying to get it a first down. and tried to go. <laughs> Houston trying to get him on that. Nope, now they take a timeout. He was trying to get him to jump again, so now they're going to take a timeout. And let's take a break here, too. You're watching football on CISN. To college. Oh, rats. Hi, Joe the Car Guy with a reminder. Before you send your kids off to school, set up an appointment with Westside Auto. We check everything from tires to belts, fluids, hoses, wipers, and lights. 44 inspection points to help prevent that oh, rats moment for your students. Call us today to set up your appointment. We'll have your kids off to school saying, For the best, head west. West Side Auto. Ever have one of those awkward moments when a business disappointed you? You got ripped off? Didn't get what you expected? The Better Business Bureau can help you avoid these uncomfortable situations. BBB accredited businesses are honest, ethical, and reviewed annually by the BBB. Don't experience another awkward moment with a bad Back to action, fourth and seven for Marshalltown. Dropping back, looking, Houston rolls, and he's pushing, pushing, pushing. Did he get it? He he kept going. He may have the first down. What a second effort by him, and he did. Looked like they had him stopped about three yards short, but he just kept pushing and pushing. Boy, I'll tell you what, Carr. Yeah, we take another look. I sure thought Houston ran out of room. Nowhere to go. Yeah, Multiple right there. Defenders. He's about five yards away, but then he just pushes the pile. And, man, that was all just individual effort there. Yeah, that's all effort from the quarterback, the junior QB, Dalen Houston. Terrific play to pick up a first down. And that's what the coach has got to like. Late in the game, your quarterback, your leader, showing that kind of effort. And, you know, you don't give up. You just keep playing hard. First and ten at the nine. Or first and goal at the nine. And diving touchdown. Houston. Well, tell you what, Dar Dalen Houston showing off his legs and athleticism again. And you mentioned it, the effort. Fighting for the pile on there. He got him a fresh set of downs on the play before on a fourth and seven. And what a drive for this Marshalltown offense to find the end zone. A junior quarterback finishes it off. So, yeah, we take another look, and here it is. Houston just fighting for diving. the pile on. Did not give up. And now the extra point is good. Makes it 35-14. to 14. And the kickoff coming, and I'm assuming we're going to see maybe an onside kick here. Although... <laughs> We've seen the danger of giving Valley a short field. They had a couple big kick returns that ended up in short fields, and they took it in uh, quite handily and scored. So, But at this point, you know, down three scores, you've got to try to get it back. Yeah, you mentioned it, Dar. You're down 21. you got to try and get the football back any way you can. I know this Valley offense is rolling right now behind 
senior quarterback Michael Bravenza. But if I'm Marshalltown, why not? You never know what can happen with 332 left to play. Not the greatest conditions out there. See what can happen. The onside kick team out on the field. Marshalltown will return home next week for homecoming against Des Moines Lincoln. And then the Valley has a big one on the road at Ankeny. And so. Yeah, that'll be a tough test for the Tigers. They're going to finish this one off, it looks like, with 332 left and go to 3-2 and two with Ankeny next week. Well, let's not count them out yet. Let's see here. Oh, they're going to kind of do a short kick and they'll go out of bounds. They were trying to kind of get it into the open area and a little too much on the kick. Yeah, a little pooch kick there from Marshalltown, and I totally get it. You know, never know with the weather out there, loose ball, but unfortunately, Aiden Price went over to the sideline and it kicked out of bounds. They'll give it to Valley here, and it looks like the 35. So the Valley offense will come back out now with 3.32 to play. They scored first with 7.22 to go on a pass to Anderson, 26 yards. Then they blocked a Marshalltown field goal in the second quarter with 7.14 to go, 60-yard return by Pinks, and it was 14 to nothing at the half. Then uh, Darius Mason ran it in from five yards out, and it's 21 nothing. Then Marshalltown came back and got a drive going to 4.16 to go in the third ring with 16 yards out. Now here's the handoff. And turning the corner. Yeah, and I expect a heavy dose of the run game here, Dar. But yeah. it looks like we got some backups in at quarterback. I believe it's number nine. And the running back, well, we'll try and make it out here as soon as we can. Possibly 24. Yeah, that in is black, uh, a new backfield. Omar Ballard, the running back. The quarterback is Quentin Loeb. Yeah, yeah, I believe it was. Yeah, Loeb, yep. number nine. You got it. In some of these guys, some reps here in the fourth. You'd love to see it. So Loeb there with Ballard straight behind him. And uh, fumbled the snap, and Loeb will go back and fall on it. That's the thing you hate. You're in there, and you're, you're so excited to do something good, and then you get, you know, drop the ball, and you got to fall on it, and everybody's watching. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you put but, you know, so that's, much pressure that's how you on your learn, shoulders. though. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no doubt. A little bit high snap. He tried to bring it down for the handoff. Uh, Not the greatest conditions out there either, Dar. Yeah. Tough break. Yeah, still been, still got mist going on out there. And they'll come up now third and 15 at the 30. Now Loeb will go under center. I don't think we see. That's the first time we've seen that all night. He fakes it. Now goes out and throws a nice... Hits a tight end out there, and he gets up for the first down. Bryce Anderson. Yeah, I believe that was Anderson. He's still in there. Yeah, he's Man, still in there. Has he had himself a night, Dar? Loeb's got to be happy with that to see that big target still in there as he rolled out and hit him. Yeah, talk about yeah. it. A one-handed grab, it looked like, too, for Anderson as he jogs off the field. Boy, this big tight end has a bright future. They're going to be just about a yard, half yard short over there. You see the... The lighted stick. And Valley's going to come up and try to get the snap off right away. Lobel sneaking ahead and behind those big linemen, and he gets the first down as we roll under two minutes to play. Yeah, plenty of room there for Loeb. He almost picked up, it looked like, roughly five on that carry. Just following the big uglies up front. Terrific, terrific play there by that Valley offensive line. A.J. Crownover is in there. Also, let's see who else we got new in there. I go down my lineup. Brett Scheffler in on the line. We'll try to run down some of the other ones. Noah Craycraft in there. There's a nice sidearm sling. Catch and hit. Crown, crown, uh, A.J. Crownover. Crownover with the catch. Yeah, Trenton Frommel with the hit. But a beautiful pass, a beautiful catch there by Loeb as well. Dropping back. Finding his receiver over the middle. Sets up second and three. Two receivers left, one right. Send the tight end in motion to the other side. And they hand it off. 
Cuts it outside, 40, 30, 25, 20, tiptoe down the sideline. Omar Ballard. Yeah, Omar Ballard, the senior running back, showing off his wheels as he scampers down the right side. <laughs> what a play as we take another look, look following his blockers and Ballard. And moves it inside the red zone for Valley. We take another look. And a shifty back, only got five outside. foot four inches tall, but he got outside Dar, as you mentioned, wheeling and dealing inside and the just, 20. Just knocked out of bounds there by Sam Griesel. Brings up first and 10 at the 16 clock. Stopped at 47 seconds to go in the game. Dropping back, looking. Throws just wide of the target there, which was uh, Danny Yeah, it looks Shiroda. like 83. Yeah. Dante Shiroda. Yeah, good route by Shiroda there. Low, just put it too far out in front for him. But I kind of like this set, letting the, the guys come in and throw the ball a little bit, work a little bit, you know. Um, Gets him a little chance to do something here. Sometimes you see him come in and they just say, well, just hand it off. Let's run the clock out. Yeah, absolutely. Hey, it's homecoming here. Valley Dar, why not let some of these guys get in there and get some valuable experience? And they shoot it out. This time out to uh, Trey Waite on the far side. It's Quentin Loeb. Yeah, talk about the reserves or backups in there going on a drive. Now third and four. We'll call a timeout. We'll see. They may run it out here and not. Uh, you get to the point where do we poke it in and try to, you know, or do we just. And and I think the other coach, they, you kind of understand these guys don't get a lot of playing time varsity-wise. So, but uh, anyway, well, Marshalltown is, is going to talk about some things that could have been, Colin, and when, you, when they look back at this in that first half, uh, you know, where they were driving, trying to go the extra yards, they fumbled, and then, you know, a couple drives they just couldn't finish. They turned it over on downs once, and, you know, they were right in it in that first two quarters. Yeah, they sure were, Dar. You talk about it twice inside the red zone, turnovers both times, huge plays that really set them back. Loeb comes out, and now timeout by Marshalltown. Yeah, so both staffs trying to square off here and get everything set. But you mentioned it, Dar. Get some of these reserves in there, and, yeah, why not let them actually get something to work on here? Valley moving the ball down the field, trying to punch it in with 22 ticks left. This is just great to watch. And for Valley, a little bit better offensive performance, but, you know, going to Ankeny, you know, you're going to have to step it up even another level against them next week at Ankeny. Yeah, no doubt. This is a good start, and obviously there's been the good and the bad for Valley here this evening. But, man, they have had some stellar drives, but you mentioned it. It's going to have to be tough, physical, smart, and successful football if they want a chance next weekend. So they come out again, third and five. And they try to throw it out wide to the tight end again, and that'll bring up fourth down. Yeah, it looks like they will keep the offense on the field here for this fourth down play. Might as well, because even if you turn it over on downs, <laughs> then, you know, and it's kind of academic, because if they would were to score 21 points in 18 seconds, we'd have a... Sports Center highlight and more, I think, here. <laughs> yeah, I tell you what, we'd be seeing that on the news here tonight, that's <laughs> yeah. for sure. Here comes Valley, probably one of the last plays here of the game. Loeb brings them out. Let's see if they throw it again or just hand it off. Fourth and five. He's going to back the pass, throws it, picked off! Is that 16? That is... Yeah, I believe Caleb it Kissero. was. Yeah, it was. You you got it, Kissero. What Kissero, a play. Yeah. We take another look. He just Caleb drives Kissero. on this football. Yeah, he Dar. 
He did. He saw that coming, didn't he? He just he sure did. Went in and was able to catch it, get the foot down, and go out of bounds. So kind of a positive there at the end for yeah, no Marshall doubt. Tom You're defense. backed up fourth and fourth and five, I believe it was. Valley trying to punch it in one last time. You come up with a huge play. That's a terrific stop, and another turnover here as Marshalltown will get it back with 13 ticks left. And I mentioned they go to Ankeny and then Marshalltown returns home. They'll be at home next week to take on the one in Lincoln in their homecoming ball game. Yeah, and this Marshalltown team has fight. You yep. know, we saw it here tonight. They'll bounce back. And they got some good skill players, too. And the, the line was punching some holes early on, too, you know. So as the clock ticks down, Valley will go to three and two on the season. Marshalltown will drop to one and four. And uh, Valley gets the homecoming win. Marshalltown falls on the road. And we'll be talking a little bit about what might have been after that first half. And uh, let's take a break. We'll come back and wrap this one up from Valley Stadium after this on CISN.TV. Western lets your UTV power through the storm. The Impact V-Plow and Impact Straight Blade with the features the pros demand. Custom tailored for your UTV. And to keep your work top notch, rely on the Tornado UTV Hopper Spreader. Now that's a job well done. Western, more jobs done faster. Visit Truck Equipment Inc. today at truckequipmentinc.com. I'm off to college. Oh, rats. Hi, Joe the Car Guy with a reminder. Before you send your kids off to school, set up an appointment with Westside Auto. We check everything from tires to belts, fluids, hoses, wipers, and lights. 44 inspection points to help prevent that oh, rats moment for your students. Call us today to set up your appointment. We'll have your kids off to school saying, For the best, head west. Westside Auto. Auto. Hi, this is Chris from Fireplace Superstore, and it's going to be an interesting patio furniture season this year. We have ordered a ton of merchandise, but due to supply chain issues, it's coming in a truckload at a time all summer long. If you want the best patio furniture, check early and check often. If you want to custom order your furniture, get in here as soon as you can to give your furniture the best chance to arrive this summer. Fireplace Superstore, Iowa's best patio furniture selection, just east of I-35 on Douglas Avenue. We all love a good win, however small or ordinary, losing track of time, finding yourself with a few extra dollars in your pocket, soaking up the perfect Iowa day. These are the everyday delights and small victories that make us smile. These are the moments that connect us all as Iowans. And these are the moments that, more often than not, start with Iowa's farm families and the corn they're growing. Because when corn grows Iowa, Iowans win. Ever have one of those awkward moments when a business disappointed you? You got ripped off? Didn't get what you expected? The Better Business Bureau can help you avoid these uncomfortable situations. BBB accredited businesses are honest, ethical, and reviewed annually by the BBB. Don't experience another awkward moment with a bad business. Trust the ones that operate with integrity. Look for the BBB seal. It's the sign of a better business. And find a better business anytime at BBB.org. Back here at Valley Stadium in West Des Moines, Dar Danielson, Colin Brown with you. The final here, 35-14. We'll run down the scoring first for you uh, uh, quickly. Valley on their first drive, 7.22 to go. It was a 26-yard pass to the tight end, Anderson, and uh, the PAT was good. It was 7-0. Then Marshalltown drove it down and got it inside the 20 but fumbled it as uh, they were – Stretching, trying to get extra yardage. Valley took over and uh, didn't do anything with it. But then later on, Marshalltown came down, got it down, set up for a 44-yard field goal. It was blocked, and Isaiah Pinks took it back 60 yards for the score, and it was 14 to nothing with the PAT. 
Then uh, that was the way it stood at the half in the third quarter, 9.55 to go. Uh, Darius Mason gets his first touchdown of the season, a five-yard run. And Gallon, they really came out of the locker room. Valley looked more pumped up in that second half starting than they kind of did in the first, I thought. And you a little yeah, bit. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, they, they had that first drive, but, man, throughout that. And so then it was a 21 nothing. Then Marshalltown got on the board with 4.16 to go to the third, a 16-yard run by Ring. It was 21-7. to Then uh, back, uh, they got the big kickoff return by Aiden Price that gave him kind of a short field. He returned it out to the 49. Then Valley takes it on in. Mason finishing it off with a two-yard run, and he he was the big uh, workhorse on that drive, too. And uh, that made it 28-7 with the PAT. Then Provenza took it on a draw with 9.39 to go in the fourth quarter, 18 yards. It was 35-7. Then a great just individual effort by Dalen Houston. He uh, looked like he was stopped and drove it down and got a first down. And then um, a couple plays later, he just – Wheeled himself in there, dove for the goal line, and got it in from nine yards out. PAT good in 35-14. So, Marshalltown, some good things they saw out of this. They, you know, were able to move the ball at times and stop Valley at times, but a big turnover that hurt him, and then just, uh, you know, the the block field goal also kind of took a little momentum out of him there in the first half. Yeah, no doubt, Dar. Two turnovers in the red zone in the first half. Big killers for this Marshalltown offense. Obviously, Dalen Houston showing that power, strength, and effort in the second half to punch one in on the ground himself. And then I thought Ace Holmes was terrific in the first half yeah. on the ground, and that offensive line was giving him room to run. He but when you're playing both ways. four to five at a clip, yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, when you're playing both ways, I think they traded it off in the second half. He was on the defensive side of the ball more so. But Ring ran well, and this Marshalltown team did. They showed a lot of fight in this ball game. And the one thing the Valley defense did in that first half is they shut down the passing game. When uh, Houston went back to throw, he was sacked a couple different times there. He really had no time to, to throw the deep ball. They kept that away from him, and they, they forced him to kind of dig it out and move it up the field slowly, didn't they? Yeah, they sure did. And he's got some explosive weapons on the outside, Corey Smith and Treshawn Brooks. But you mentioned it. He tried to climb in the pocket, Dar, multiple times, did Houston. Just nowhere to go. That front four for Valley was terrific, just swallowing him up. Multiple sacks here on the evening. And then big Cyril Fountain made some big-time plays and had a big-time hit. Set the tone there in the second half as well. Well, uh, Valley gets tougher next week. They travel to Ankeny to play Ankeny, and uh, they were leading Roosevelt 28 to nothing last I heard. So they uh, were getting a big win tonight. And for Marshalltown, they come home and face Des Moines Lincoln in a homecoming match up there. And uh, again, they got some good things, some good athletes, some things to work out there. But uh, I was impressed by the effort that they put in here tonight. Yeah, no doubt. This Marshalltown team, a lot of season left, and they have some ability or a lot of ability on the offensive, defensive side of the football. I expect them to obviously play well here out the stretch. And then Valley, you mentioned it, a big one next week. An impressive victory here tonight for the Tigers on homecoming. All right, the final 35-14. I believe I am at Waukee next week. And uh, let's see, Valley be over at Ankeny, so I think we would probably have that one. And Paul Yeager, Mr. Yeager would be on that one. And then um, I'm not sure what our other game would be right off the top of my head. Uh, Dowling? It might be Dowling here, yeah. So <laughs> anyway, but check uh, – Check us out. Be looking for the plays of the week. Randy always puts those together. I think we might have a couple out of that, uh, out of this game here. But uh, be looking for those on CSN.TV on our website, too, and get the schedule and uh, follow social media. They send that all out so we know where everybody's at. But, uh, Colin, fun doing it with you again here. Another good game. Uh, uh, chilly out there, but, man, a lot of action in this ballgame. It sure was, Dar. It was great to be back in the booth with you here this evening at Valley. The Tigers get over that hump going to 3-2, and two, now above 500. Big-time victory for Valley here on homecoming. And yeah, we'll see what they can do on the road against Ankeny. Yeah, no doubt. That's going to be a big-time game next week. Obviously, two teams that aren't too fond of each other. Ankeny ranked very highly number one in the state. It's going to be a slugfest next Friday. All right, thanks to Sean, our producer, and the cameraman here tonight. That's going to wrap it up from Valley on CISN.TV.